Credit Union High School Football. 92-1 the Wolf. 92-1 the Wolf. W-O-H-F. And we are underway. It's a little bit of a squib type kick. Clyde kicks it into the front line. Defenders of Van Wert, Mike, and Van Wert's going to recover. They're going to get the ball first and 10. It looks at about their own 39-yard line. I'm not sure if that was planned or not. It did hit a player and it fumbled on the ground, but either way, you're giving the great Van Wert offense good field position. They're moving right to left, as you hear it here tonight. They're in their road red jerseys, red helmets, white jer- excuse me, white jerseys, red trousers, red numerals. And here is Aiden Pratt, their quarterback. He's singing back. Here comes a little jet sweep, and the quarterback's going to keep it himself. And Clyde sits him right down for a loss of two yards. Yeah, that was a nice job. You know, we called Blue Norman's name. Blue Norman was the uh, performer of the year for the Lake Division. And that doesn't happen very often on uh, the defensive line, but he made a nice stop there for a two-yard loss. Five receiver set for Van Wert. Straight back, they're going to throw a quick out. It's going to be caught. There's a nice block, and it's going to be completed pass for a pickup of about seven. And they're going to get across the 40 to the 43. So that'd be a pickup of six on that pass. It's going to make it third down and a long four. And Van Wert with a five receiver set. Again, their quarterback, Aiden Brady, he's 6'4", almost 200 pounds. He's a junior. His first year quarterback, and boy, has he performed well. Clyde doing a nice job of mixing up their defensive coverage right now, moving up to man-man and moving back to a little bit of zone. Now they're back at man. Now they're bringing Nate Jackson right next to Pratt. There's a snap. They give to Jackson. No quarterback keeps it, turns around the corner. He's got the seam in the first down and more, and there he goes. And he's going to go almost all the way, but he gets dropped um, from behind by Clyde and gets it down to the 25. Let's go down to Brad Banner. Brad, who made that tackle? Uh, that was a secondary cut off to make that tackle, uh, but it was a great fake by Pratt to get around in. Absolutely. Yeah, that was also that was able to, from his safety spot. Brad, a quarterback. Try action again, run pass option. They turn around the corner and they get about two yards. And they'll get it to about the 22 yard line. And we're already having the whistles down there. Got the sideline warning on the Flyers. All right, so Clyde gets the first sideline warning. Second one turns into a penalty, my friends. So moving the ball quickly, here comes Van Wert. Boy, that run pass option, he runs it pretty well, Mike. Uh, he runs it real well, Ooh. I tell you, I did not know who had the ball at that point in time. Yeah, of course, with thoughts, it's hard to see through these windows, but we will tell you that Pratt's a magician. i tell you what else is impressive about Pratt is he's their defensive end. You don't see many quarterbacks play defensive end. We're going to have officials time out. What are the officials going to be talking about? Looking at the side chains, maybe? So Brad Bannister... An official from the back, Judge. All right. Maybe reset the play clock. Sitting at 40 right now. I'm not sure what they're discussing, whether no. it's where the uh, where the ball went out of bounds at or... Well, the conversation is with the Van Wert people. As Van Wert requested this location here, so it would be a little bit closer to them. Oh, and they are the defending state champions. So Pratt hands off to Jackson. Jackson's going to get hit, and he'll get all the way to almost the 20. They're going to spot him at the 21. They pick up of just a couple. It's going to be third down, and we'll call it about five yards, maybe six. Yeah, right Max, now. Max Meyer's on that tackle, and, uh, you know, that's a, as long as he's doing what he needs to do, just keep that contained. Don't let him outside. Big third down play for Van Wert. Man in motion from right to left. Now he goes back to the right. Quarterback's going to keep it running. He's looking to throw. He's going to throw it across the middle. It's going to be caught, and it'll be complete, and he's going to keep his feet moving. He's going to get down into the red zone, down to about the eight. Let's go down to Brad Bannister. A little play action, roll out pass, Brad. Yeah, just a real quick pass. Nice curl pattern by uh, Van Wert there, and Brady Wilson gambled just a little bit on that. Yeah, Carson Smith did a nice job of coming back for that. And into the end zone is a touchdown for Van Wert. You know, we've seen this recipe a few times. We saw this with Bellevue quite a few times where they just get back to the quarterback. The line just blocks man over, and then the quarterback picks a hole, finds it, and Pratt, you can see why he has as many yards as he does on the season because he's able to get through those holes very quickly. Looking for the extra point.
Don't convert. There's snap. There's a hold. The kick is up, and the kick is good. So with 10-14 to go, just a couple minutes in this game, they go right down the field, and it is Van Wert with the first lead. Van Wert 7, Clyde nothing. We'll take a timeout on the BAS Sports Network. Miller Super Value and Clyde is the place to shop for great savings on groceries. Each week, hundreds of items are discounted to help you save even more. Check out their expanded meat department. For a great supper, shop Miller's extensive deli for fried chicken, wings, great salads, and side dishes. Take and Big Pizza and Fresh Daily Sushi are now available. Miller's Super Value, your hometown grocery, is proud of our Clyde Flyers. Go Flyers! Hi, I'm Nick Cray, CEO of Fremont Federal Credit Union. We're proud to sponsor high school sports on Eagle 99, 92.1 The Wolf, and 100.9 Coast Country. Investing in our communities and our youth are what we're all about. Stop into any of our convenient offices or visit us online at FremontFCU.com to check out the credit union difference. We offer local decision-making on loans, making the process fast and easy for our members. Visit us today at FremontFCU.com. Membership eligibility required, federally insured by NCUA. Fremont Federal Credit Union High School Football. 92-1 The Wolf. 92-1 The Wolf. W-O-H-F. All right, welcome back to Napoleon. Early lead for Van Wert. McCracken will kick it. High end over end. Will be fielded by Clyde at the 20 to the 25 up the right sideline. Cut back up middle and get into the 30-yard line. It'll be first and 10 Clyde at their own 30. So, Mike, quick score by last year's defending champs, and it was all RPO by that quarterback, Aiden Pratt. And that's the one thing that we said, you know, at the beginning of the broadcast that, you know, they, they're as balanced as Clyde, but – they're balanced with one man to be able to do everything, and that's Pratt. So the Clyde defensive coordinators will be thinking about what they want to do here. And here we go, Jaden Cook at quarterback. Two receivers on the near side, one to the far side. Here comes a man in motion to Zovemeyer. They're going to give to Daniels. Daniels up the left side, and he's going to turn and spin. He'll get hit about the 34. He's going to pick up about four. Michael Daniels on the first attempt for Clyde. That was Carter Miller on that stop. Carter Miller is a uh, defensive back who was able to come up. I tell you, that's the thing about this team. Carter Miller's leading the team in tackles with 89 from his defensive secondary spot. He also wow. has four tackles for loss. So Clyde sends one receiver to the far side, two to the near, and they quick snap to Daniels. He this time looks for a hole. He gets across the 35, and they're going to spot him at about the 36-yard line. Just pick up two, so it's going to make it third down and four for Clyde. Yeah, Turner Witten came across the line right there from a defensive line spot. He's 6'1", 230 senior. Two receivers in the near side. That's it. They've got a wing back. Now they're going to switch. Cook looks to the sideline. Third, and we'll call it five for Clyde. 9-12 to go here. Van Wert up 7 to nothing early in this contest. Winner takes on Port Clinton Perkins. Winner. Cook looking to throw. Looking, looking, looking. He's going to go across the middle. It's going to be caught. And what are they going to say? No. Incomplete. Let's go down to Brad Bannister. Brad, that particular pass play looked like he had his hands on it. What happened? Yeah, it looked like uh, Cobble caught it, but it actually did hit his chest straight down to the ground. He should have kept it in his hands a little bit more. Well, he doesn't have that big club on his arm anymore. And not not sure he, how to play. Yeah. So Clyde's going to get up the line of scrimmage quickly. It looks like they're going to go for it on fourth down. They're on 36. Or is Jaden Cook going to step back and pooch upon him? Yes, he is. Here comes the man in motion. I think Clyde would like to draw them off. That is a very disciplined Van Wert team for sure. Just under nine minutes to go, and he is going to pooch upon it. He kicks it end over end. It's going to bounce, and pretty good bounce for Clyde. And it gets inside Real the 20-yard line, and they're going to down it right at the 15. So with the punt, Van Wert with the lead, they're going to get the ball at the 15-yard line. Yeah, that's going to help Jaden's average out. Jaden averages 38 yards a punt right now for the season. So, Mike, Clyde defense on notice right now? A little bit. You know, Clyde has been uh, switching up a little bit zone and uh, man. I think if they stick with man a little bit more, they'll be able to keep the linebackers in a little bit and maybe cut down on that run game up the middle. Aiden Pratt, the quarterback, playing in a five-receiver set, and they're just letting him make all the decisions. So right now they're moving right to left. They're at their own 15. Pratt looks over the defense. He says something. He steps back. Standing right about the 10. 
man in motion. They're going to fake the handoff. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to get hit. He's going to get dropped for a loss of about a half a yard. So Clyde Red at that time, Mike, he tried just to run off right tackle. And we've noticed, and let's keep an eye with Brad Bannister on the sideline. They have not run to the left side of the Clyde defense yet. No, that was, again, Max Myers on that tackle. Five receivers, three to the far, two to the near. Pratt looking back. He's going to throw one. He's going to complete a little pass out, contained pit pass. That's going to get out to the 20-yard line. Yeah, the receivers are doing a nice job out there, John. They're just stalk blocking, and uh, they were in a zone that time, so they only had one defensive back to get around to the outside. Third down and four, 8-16 and counting. Seven and up, and Van Wert with the early lead here in Napoleon. Winner takes on Port Clinton and Perkins here tonight in Division Four. Fat back, high snap. He's going to pump fake. He's going to take off and run. And he's going to slide down after he gets the first down as he saw th three blue jerseys or blue uh, uh, Clyde players coming his way. Yeah, they were coming up field, coming up field hard. He's just allowing them to come up field. Right. And then he's finding the hole and then vacating uh, wherever they're not. 6 4 runs like a deer so far here. Eight minutes and counting. Seven and nothing. Van Wert with the ball. Back, he keeps it himself again. Samuel get hit, and he drives forward, and then he gets hit hard and dropped. Solid hit. Let's go down to Brad Banster. Brad, that time oh, somebody came up from the Clyde defense and really laid a hit on him. Yeah, they did. They came up, filled that hole, which is what they're going to have to do. Van Wert's defense is, or offensive line is doing a great job of creating those holes in the middle. Yeah, that was Will Lozier that came in and put the stick on. Second down, we'll say six. Man in motion, fake it. He's going to throw. He's going to be out here. Just a possession pass on the sideline. It'll be completed for a first down to the Clyde 40. You know, what they're doing right now is Clyde is going to stay in that zone. They're giving him about a three-yard cushion. And they're going to take that cushion. Carson Smith's doing a nice job of just coming back for it. Quick handoff again up the middle. Jackson gets it. He finds a nice hole off left center. And he's going to go forward for about six, almost seven, to the 46-yard line. We'll pick up a six. So they are mixing it up offensively. Now, quick snap. Here they go to Jackson again. He gets a nice hole, and he's going to be close to the first down. I think they'll give it to him. Let's go down to Brad Bannister. Brad, did they get that first down? In yes, they did. He just barely got it, moving the chains. Yeah, Walker Britt tripped him up, but it was past the first down marker. You know, this hurry up, Clyde has got to get ready to go on this. Quick tempo. Quarterback keeps himself. He goes off the right side. He'll spin, and he'll pick up two yards to the Clyde 48. So, Brad Bannister on the sideline. Tell me a little bit about team speed and size of these two teams as they've been on the field now here for a good handful of snaps. I don't, I can't see a huge difference in terms of size by the two players, but I will say this, uh, both Van Wert's offense and defensive line is very long and athletic and quick, and I think that's what's given Clyde a little bit of difficulty. We take a wild card timeout. We have, a, we have an injury, injury timeout here on the field for Clyde, and we'll go ahead and come right back after this here. Van Wert with the ball and the lead. We'll be back after this injury timeout brought to you by Weldy Insurance Group. I loved playing high school sports. I loved the competition, the camaraderie, the bands, the crowds, all the pageantry, and I wanted to keep playing. But I graduated. No college is called, and neither did the pros. So, to stay close to the game I loved, I decided to become a high school official. You know, a referee. When I played high school sports, I learned the importance of integrity, good sportsmanship, and respect for the rules. Now, as a high school official, I get to help model these same values to others. Maybe the colleges and the pros didn't call, but the kids in Ohio did. And now, I'm enjoying the competition, the camaraderie, the bands, the crowds, and all the pageantry of high school sports all over again. Interested in becoming a licensed high school official? Go to highschoolofficials.com to learn more and begin the application process. Fremont Federal Credit Union High School Football. 92-1 the Wolf. 92-1 the Wolf. W-O-H-F. All right, injury timeout by a Clyde player. Let's go down, and he still is down on the ground. Brad Bannister, any update on who that might be? Uh, appears to be Max Myers. They are looking, it looks like at a leg or a knee here and they are, they brought some guys out to help them off the field. Hopefully it's nothing too serious. You know, we called Max Myers name quite a few times tonight already. So that's going to be a huge blow to the Clyde Flyers. Yeah. He's not, doesn't look like he's putting any weight on his foot. So, uh, or knee, I'm not sure which one it is. Max Myers, 
Already eight plays in this drive, which started on the Van Wert 15, Mike. It's a nice long drive for them. And, and as well as time consuming. You know, they're keeping the Clyde Flyers off the field. Clyde's had the ball three times and punted. There's only uh, 6.47 left in this quarter. So the Flyers with one chance on offense, yeah. what, three and out. And here we go at Napoleon High School. It is Van Roy with the lead and the ball. They're moving. Aiden Pratt, their quarterback, standing on his own side of the 47. Here comes a man in motion. That's Crutchfield. And they're going to do a little pitch up in the middle, and he'll get hit. And he'll pick up about three, and it'll get him to about the Clyde 45, and it'll be third down. Mike, that's just a little shuttle pass, yep. which you see on Sundays quite often, right? And then what we've seen so far for them, they like to go ahead and throw off this third down and short, and they give it to Jackson. He's going to get hit, and he will not make it. Uh, he'll get dropped at the Clyde uh, 42, it looks like, a pickup of three, so it's going to be fourth down and short. So Dylan Overmeyer, and uh, his words as well as Jaron Bolger on that stop. So big fourth down play. Van Wert, the Cougars, trying to keep this drive alive. Pratt back at quarterback. He's looking for the snap. No penalties in this game so far with 5.53 to go in the first quarter. Van Wert with a 7 to nothing lead. Let's see if their quarterback goes up under center. He won't. He's got two backs back there to protect him. Only three receivers in the set. And he's going to keep it himself, and he's going to get hit. And he did not get it. And the Clyde Flyers stopped them on the fourth and down. And Aiden Pratt that time got hit high, got low, and Brad Bannister down to you. Huge lift for the Clyde defense. Oh, that was an incredible stop. I saw Dylan Overmeyer sneaking up, thinking about uh, Aiden Pratt taking the ball in, and he came up and stuck him. Yeah, this could be the formula that Clyde needs right now. Get that little bit of momentum just on that stop right there. And uh, they got to get some first downs and move that ball down the field. You know, in Rocky IV, Rocky had to cut the Russian before he knew that he was just a man, right? Well, sometimes you have to lay out a pretty good hit, Mike, to know that you can play with somebody. Let's see if their offense takes on top of that. Clyde with the ball, first and ten. And here comes Daniels. He spits the one, keeps his feet moving. He's pulling three, four, and he gets to the 50-yard line. And Daniels runs hard for almost eight, and that's exactly what the Clyde Flyer offense needed. Yep, and Carter Miller again coming up and making that stop. So Clyde's showing quick tempo. And right now you've got two, four, five, six, seven, about seven or eight in the box right now. They're, they're really challenging Clyde to throw the football in tight. Daniels gets it off right guard. He gets the first down. There he goes. Daniels at the 40. He changes hands. He's at the 30. And he gets shut out of bounds at the 25. So Michael Daniels said, hey, listen, I got 270 last week. I'm going to get a few more here. And in this drive, he has just lifted this Clyde offense down to the 25, a pickup of 25. At that time, Daniels did a nice job. He brought it up into the middle, saw the seam to the outside, got it to the outside. And Nate Jackson was able to push him out of bounds, but you know that's something that Clyde has got to do. They got to keep that funnel down. If you put everybody in the box and you can get to the outside, you're going to get good yards. First and ten, Clyde, and they go misdirection. Janos this time runs into a wall. He'll pick up maybe a yard, and then they spot him at the 23. A little misdirection there. It'll be second down and nine. And the Flyers definitely in four-down territory. We've seen Coach Carter here. Uh, oh, yeah. He hasn't kicked a field goal all year. So, therefore, he is he is going for it. So, second down and nine, 4.33 to go. Clyde trying to tie the football game. Van Wert came out and gave him a pretty solid punch in the gut right now. And Clyde trying to answer. Here comes the man in motion. And that's going to be to Wilson. Wilson trying to turn the corner. He goes and starter steps. He's going to turn the side, and he'll pick up maybe a yard. That time they read it pretty well. Down down to Brad Bannister. Good team speed on the perimeter for Van Wert. Yeah, Van Wert did a great job of making Clyde stretch it to the outside. And even with Brady Wilson, he couldn't get there. No. no. He, had, he had a long ways to go. Yeah, the secondary did a nice job just keeping him in front and not letting him get the uh, to the sideline and get upfield. Well, Flyers didn't have any receivers out there to help lead block either. He's kind of out there on his own. Hand off to Daniels up the middle. Puts his head down, and he'll get to maybe the 21. So Clyde's going to have a fourth down and a good six yards here, Mike, in this play. Yeah, that was a nice job by Nate Jackson to come up. They know they can't hit Daniels high. He had to wrap him up low around the legs to get him down. Two receivers to the far side right now. 
Fourth down, 325 to go. Good drive by the Flyers, but trying to not stall here on a fourth down. Both teams facing the turnover on downs. Fanwork just did 11 play drive. Let's see if Jaden Cook can do this. He's rolling right low. He's got a guy open, and he's going to have to stutter and take the ball himself. And boy, he just uh, he couldn't see the receiver open up downfield, Mike. No, it, it, one thing that uh, you know happened downfield is they kind of played it off where it looked like the receiver was open, but Jaden Cook was aware of that, and uh, they were pretty much covered up downfield. There was nowhere for him to go to the outside. Now, that was a good job by that defensive line to be able to close anything off and not allow him to scramble like we've seen him do a number of times this year. When he's scrambled and done well, Mike, it's done it quickly. Yes. And that was more of a developing situation, right? So um, in that particular time, they turn it over. So both teams have turned it over on downs. Aiden Pratt, the quarterback, they've got the set nothing. lane. He's rolling to his right. Jenner likes to throw it. He's got a guy coming out of the backfield wide open. And getting a first down all the way up to the 35-yard line is going to be Crutchfield. Crutchfield gets it up to the 35. Yeah, Clyde was not ready for that because they didn't bring a linebacker out. They were playing a zone coverage, and it went deep, and nobody picked up uh, the running back out of the backfield. First and 10 at the 35. Here comes Crutchfield moving right to the left. They're rolling this way, trying to run the same play, and and Pratt's going to throw it. It's going to be caught. And that time he got the secondary receiver, and this secondary receiver was Garrett Gunter. And a first down right just past the chains at the 46-yard line. Yeah, Plummer on that tackle. These receivers are doing such a nice job of just coming back for the ball and to create separation between the defense. Quick again. Now it's going to be a give and go by Pratt. Pratt's going to get tripped up, and he'll get dropped right about the 49-yard line pickup of three. Yeah. And mixing it up well and keeping that Clyde defense off balance. Yeah, that time Jaron Bolger was coming in and made that stop, but uh, you know they're doing a nice job of finding creases. Pratt throws across the middle. It's caught and getting lunging forward. Another first down for Van Wert down to the 41. So right now, just intermediate passing, Mike. The different, yeah. the different than any of the other drives so far tonight. Exactly, and that's that's one thing they're nullifying that defensive rush because right. it's getting rid of it so quick. Which is smart. Now he's going to roll to the right. He's looking, looking, looking. He's going to go ahead. He's going to stop. He's going to pick up some yards on the ground. He does. He gets down the sideline. He picks it up all the way down to the 34-yard line. Pickup of seven. You know, Pratt's doing such a nice job of just waiting for his blockers to get out there in front of him. Even though it's a scramble, the blockers are coming out. You can see they've done this a number of times this year where they get that scramble drill. Second down and four. Under two minutes to go, seven to nothing. The lead by the Cougars of Van Wert. Three receivers on the near side, two to the far side. Pratt stand back at about the 39. There's the snap. He's straight back. He's looking flush out of the pocket. He's going to throw it out here. It's going to be caught. And just a perfect pass, Mike. Let's go down to Brad Bass for Brad. Every time he throws the ball, he knows exactly where he's going with it. Yeah, he doesn't hold on to it very long. No. Pratt also finds a way to get it out quickly with, with a little sidearm sling. He really right. wheels that thing from the side when he kicks out to those receivers. Yeah, when he throws it, and it's between two defenders. So he knows where the seams are. He's back to throw again. He's looking. He's got all sorts of time. He's being flushed out of the pocket. He's going to throw and hit a receiver right on the run. He's got the five down to the three. And what are they going to say? He's down at the one-yard line. And that receiver, I believe, was Connor Pratt, his brother. Yeah, and that's something that they're doing. They're finding He's finding those holes in the defense and that zone coverage. And into the end zone and a touchdown for Van Wert. I believe that was Nate Jackson on the carry. Yeah, Nate Jackson has, uh, you know, carried the load quite a bit here tonight. He's had 17 touchdowns on the year. Setting up for the extra point. And Clyde's going to jump. Let's see if they'll go for two now. And they're still going to set for this. No, nope. no, nope. going to kick it. They're going to kick the ball. All right, one forty to go. Thirteen to nothing now. Double digit lead by Van Wert. And here comes the kick. It's up and it is good. 
So we'll keep it right here. One for you to go. 14 to nothing. Van Wert with the lead over Clyde. They have scored on two of their top three possessions, Mike. Clyde moved the ball in the last possession, just could not maintain it. Boy, Van Wert made him pay. Oh. Yes, they did. And what they're doing, you know, Clyde is mixing it up between a man and zone. And most of the time when they're in man coverage, they're running the ball, perhaps finding the seam, be able to get up through the middle and run the ball. And when they're in a zone, like that, the sideline pass, they threw it behind the linebacker in front of the safety. I mean, he knew exactly where this open zone was going to be at. And then across the middle, he just cleared the safety. No one else was there and uh, made that completion. And like uh, like Brad said, he knows exactly where he's going. He's he's throwing that ball hard into the wind. Six four two hundred, very decisive. I'm very impressed by the way they play. Up there, up fourteen to nothing. Clyde kind of in a little bit of a desperate need, Mike, to get a score here in this next possession. Clyde pull close here. McCracken kicks it high end over end, fielded at the fifteen to the twenty. 25, looking for a gap, going to the outside. Boy, just not running hard back there right now, Mike. I noticed that the return man was, um, I believe that was a Lozier, and Lozier just kind of waiting for a seam instead of just going up hard, and therefore he didn't get much. He got maybe a handful of yards. Clyde will have it first and 10 at their own 27-yard line. What do you think the Clyde defense wants to do right now? I mean, the Clyde offense, excuse me. Well, they got to establish Michael Daniels and keep him, uh, you know, churning up some yardage. I think Clyde has to establish a little bit of possession passing. Jaden Cook with it, flares it out, it's caught. Trying to get upfield and turn on the corner, and he'll pick up some good yardage and almost a first down. They'll get up to about the 35, so maybe they heard me in the headset. But maybe they, they did, and that's exactly, uh, again, a nice job out there of stalk blocking the defensive backs, but that was a nice job of running as well, breaking about three tackles. So they got it to the 36-yard line. It'll be second down and one, and that's what I mean. I think Clyde has to get some momentum in their offense a little bit. They can grind it out, but they need to mix it up a little bit too. Here comes a man in motion to this near side. And we'll be back. Cook looking. Cook looking, looking, looking. He's looking deep. He's got a guy deep, and it's going to be incomplete. They had two defenders up on top of Wilson that time. Read it very, very well. And that's exactly what they're going to do. They're playing his zone coverage as well. And the backside corner is what's coming over. When they see Wilson going towards the middle of the field, the safety's staying with him. Backside corner's coming over to help that out. And then the outside linebacker's going covering anything to the outside. So now that you know they're doubling on Wilson, and they're taking the other one here. A third receiver leaking out of the backfield could be wide open. And that, that would be covered by the linebacker. That would be wide open. Maybe Overmeyer, somebody releasing after a chip block or something like that. Third down and short. They've got to convert here. Cook here, quarterback. He's going. And it's going to hand off to Daniels. He's going to start on the line of scrimmage. I'm not sure if he got it, Matt. Looks like he did. Looks like he gets almost to the 40-yard line. Brad Bannister down to you. Yeah, he did a really good job of kind of avoiding that initial rush by Van Wert, squirting through the hole and getting the first down by a couple yards. Yeah, Braylon Parker did a nice job. And, again, they know that they can't tackle him high. They're tackling him down around the leg so he can't keep those legs churning. First and 10, Clyde, a little possession pass out here. It's going to be caught, trying to turn the corner, stud a step. Ooh, big hit down there right around the 45. And I tell you what, big number 76. Turner Witten at 6'1", 230, just laid a lick on uh, Clyde Receiver. What Clyde Receiver was that? Do we know? That was uh, Olsen. Yeah, he, he took a big boy hit right down on the 44-yard line when he went straight down. 36 seconds left. Let's see if Clyde gets another playoff. They'll have to before the end of the quarter. Two to the near, one to the far side. Cook up under center. They're going to go ahead and fake it. No, they're going to fake it again. They're looking deep. They have him open this time. Let's see if they can get it to him. It's going to be incomplete. Just took a little long to get it there. There's some isolation. And to be honest, the receiver was open for a while, but it gave time for the defender to come up and knock that pass away. And that was Carson Smith that came up and knocked that away. You saw Carson Smith on the offensive side catch a lot of balls, so he knows how that trajectory is going to go, and he was able to knock that down. And that was against Cabo, to be honest. Cabo was open there. But uh, just took a little play. Great play call, though. Great play fact, too, by Clyde. And that pass was in the teeth of that win. Right. Yeah, that could change when they switch sides. So Clyde now three receivers to the far side, one to the near side. Daniels just to the left. 
of Jaden Cook. Clyde looking. Cook can keep it. Possession pass is going to be caught out here. And it's going to be up to about the 48-yard line. Pick up a four, but pretty good solid hit out there, and that will make it third down and short. That'll be the end of the first quarter. So at the end of the first quarter, play, it's been all Van Wert so far. Van Wert 14 and Clyde nothing. Stay tuned for a second quarter. You're listening to Fremont Federal Credit Union Playoff Action here on 92.1 The Wolf, part of the BAS Sports Network. Hi, my name is Dr. Charles Hall, and I'm proud to share with the community that PT Services has recently opened a clinic at 1800 West State Street in Fremont. I've worked with PT Services for approximately 40 years, including referral, personal, and high schools. I recommend uh, PT Services for their therapy needs. It can be located at 419-332-6709. Go local teams. Give your home the makeover it deserves at Fremont Floor Covering. Their knowledgeable staff can show you the many floor covering options available. Carpet, vinyl, waterproof flooring, laminate, hardwood, and ceramic tile. Fremont Floor Covering has over 150 carpet and vinyl remnants to choose from. Schedule for a quality professional installation or or do it yourself. Quality floor covering at affordable prices since 1997. 12 months, same as cash available. Fremont Floor Covering, near the corner of North Front and State Street. Fremont Federal Credit Union High School Football. 92-1 The Wolf. 92-1 The Wolf. W-O-H-F. All right, start of the second quarter. Fourth and one for Clyde. Jane Cook under center. He's going to give it to Daniels. He spins around the right side and looks like he will get the first down on the 50-yard line. So Brad Bannister, a big fourth down conversion for the Flyers. Right now, early stats on Aiden Pratt, 10 for 10 for 100 and some yards, uh, over 100 yards and 62 yards on the ground in the first quarter alone. Wow, you can see why he comes into this game as highly regarded as he is. 3,000 yards passion, 1,000 yards rushing, uh, impressive so far. And he didn't start for them last year in the championship, championship game. He was a backup. Unbelievable. He's only a junior. He's a junior. <laughs> I would say he's most a decisive quarterback we've seen this year, by far. Well, we thought we saw a good one last week. Yeah, we did. This. Yeah, this is a notch above. First and 10, Clyde right at midfield, high snap. Clyde across the middle, and it's going to be dropped. And I believe Aiden Pratt, number 15 there, got a hand on the ball from his defensive end spot. It looked like the Clyde receiver kind of took his eyes off at maybe. Yeah, he, he saw he saw number seven, Braylon Parker, coming right at him. And, uh, yeah, they – that might have got a gator arm. I think so. Yeah, you've got to hit some of those. That's for sure. You've got to stay focused. Down by 14. Clyde with the ball. Back to throw again. This time they're going to throw it out here. It will be complete along the sideline. And they'll get two about the 45. So that make it third down and five. Trey Loddick was out there on coverage. And, and right now, again, they're playing, they're playing his own coverage. So they're right. off. So you've got a good three, four yard. Sure. Yeah, I mean, this is where you can do your, you know, little quick out, pick it down the field type thing. Here comes Olsen in motion. Olsen had a big game for the Flyers last week. They sure need one out of him tonight for sure against Van Wert. Back to throw. They're going to hand it off up the middle. And it's going to be a spin and turn. It's going to be first down by Daniels across the 40 to the 39. Right off, right guard. Eli Klein. Was able to grab onto him. And again, Daniels keeping those legs moving, picked up that extra yardage to get that first down. 14 to nothing. Van Wert with the lead here. 11 minutes to go in this first half of play. Back to throw. Cook, he's looking. He's got a single receiver. He's got him open. It's going to be incomplete. Another good defensive pass. And right down to Brad Bannister. Brad, again, those tight receivers are open for a second, but if that ball's not there, the defenders are coming up and really close and quick. Yeah, those quarterbacks doing a great job of covering these Clyde receivers man for man, and there's not much of a window at all for Cook to get that ball in. No, Trey Loddick did a nice job, and what he what really was a nice job is keeping that left hand off right. and not causing pass interference. I know that with the right hand. Yeah, he, he did not press on the left side. And that's going to be called pass interference every time, but he's keeping that hand off, going up with the right hand, knocking it down. Second and 10, 14 to nothing. 10.50 to go in the half. Clyde wanting to throw the ball. Here comes Wilson in motion. They're going to give up the middle. This time they could give it to Overmeyer. I believe he keeps the feet turning. He Daniels. runs to the 30. Excuse me, Daniels. He gets down to the 30-yard line. That time a little counter. 
and they pick up good yards. In fact, I think they're going to be very close to the first down. Yeah, that was Aiden Pratt on the tackle there. Well, Aiden Pratt had to hang on to somebody for once, right? Third down and short for Clyde at the 30. They've been in the red zone one time, could not convert, turn it over on downs. Man in motion is Cobble. Three receivers on the far side. Daniels just to the right. And Jaden Cook up under center. He keeps it himself, puts his head down, and he'll easily get the first down. So Clyde down to the 28, moving again, the Flyers. Nice surge by that offensive line just to push the defensive line back enough to get that first down. So in Region 14, Division 4, the number one seed, Bellevue Redmond, went down the first week. Here's the number two and three seeded teams, and they're playing like it right here tonight. Yeah, with only uh, three losses between both these teams, that says a lot. First and 10, moving right to left. Clyde is at the 28-yard line, 9.46 to go. Here comes Wilson in motion from left to right. Now he's in the slot. Jaden Cook back. He's looking, looking, looking. He pump fakes. He's going to go into the end zone, and it's going to be in and out of the hands of the attendant receiver. That time a little pump fake, and who did he try to go to, Brad? He tried to get it to uh, Brady Wilson out there. It looks like Brady might have hesitated, maybe misread that ball. Yeah, again, Trey Lodick was right there in the coverage, and he came all the way across the field to be able to cover that. So Brady came from the left side all the way almost to the right side. Two receivers each side for Clyde. It's second down and 10. Second and long. They've been chasing the chains a little bit here in this first half of play. Here comes Olsen in motion left to right. Then he'll stop and they'll look. And I always kind of wonder what that uh, motion does for the offense. Like. Either way, looking for the snap. Cook. And we're going to have a penalty. Delay a game. Oh, so they did not get it off in time. So that's going to make it second down and 15. We move the ball to the 34. Our first penalty of the football game. Yeah, this has been a very well-played game as far as penalties go. Well, the officials are letting them play. You know, with, with Van Wert just going with the four-man front, you know, the linebackers are doing a nice job of stepping up and uh, shutting down a lot of those holes that are usually open. Forcing Clyde to throw, Mike. One thing Clyde doesn't really have is that intermediate passing game across the middle part of the defense. Let's see if they can find somebody open there. High snap, looking, pump faking, going deep into the end zone again, and this time it's going to be caught. No, it's intercepted. intercepted. Intercepted as they went in the end zone with the football for them That's as Lodic. Russell. Is it Lodic? He's still got the football. He's still running. He's down the sideline. He's gone. No. He gets tackled at the 50-yard line. And that time, let's go down to Brad Bannister. Brad, they both went up for it, and he ripped it out of the hands of Clyde. Took it, away from, Took it yeah, right away yeah. from him. Yeah, that was just a battle in the air that uh, Van Wert won uh, against Cobble. Yeah, he just, I mean, you thought it was a touchdown. I thought it was a touchdown. Next thing you know, we got the defender running around the back of the end zone and bringing it out almost to the 50-yard line. So, Brad, that was right in front of you. How did that happen? Uh, it, you know, it's just great defense again. Uh, the ball might have been just a touch underthrown, uh, but that's a ball that gets up in the air, and you have to fight for that ball if you want to pull that down because it was pretty much a 50-50 ball when it was up, and uh, we saw Van Wert come away with it. We thought it was in Cobble's hands, so they yeah. he got robbed. Yeah. <laughs> well, he, yeah. The robber came in and took it from him. So they're... What was the infraction on the play? Uh, another sidewide uh, sideline warning on Clyde, so they're going to get penalized. Yep, they yep. got penalized five yards and put it over in the Clyde side, the Clyde 47. Two penalties. All right, Van Wert with a chance to go up. They're going to play action fast. Quarterback's going to keep it. He's going to log forward and lunge, but he gets tackled, and he only picks up maybe half a yard. So. That, to me, looked like a broken play. Johnny faked one side, and he thought he was going to hand it off. Um, to Jackson, and Jackson just kind of stood there, so Pratt said, well, I'll just try to do what I can and get the ball field. He's been doing it all night, right? 8.48 to go, 14 to nothing. And Van Wert could put a solid hold on this game if they could get up another score here in the first half of play. Here's a jet sweep to the outside, and getting hit and dropped and lunging forward for about two to about the four, almost the 45-yard line. Yeah, nothing doing there when, when you got Overmeyer who uh, is leading the team in tackles. Uh, Dylan Overmeyer has 134 tackles on the season, and you're not going to be able to run away from him. Braylon Parker, Braylon Parker with the jet sweep for Van Wert. 
Third down and nine. Big third down play for the Flyers right now. We've not seen a punt in the football game except for the pooch punt by Jaden Cook in the very first series. Here comes a man in motion, rolling to his left. This is the first time they've gone left. And they're going to throw it here. It's going to be complete, and it will be for a first down. You know, I can't say enough, John, about how those receivers, but they're driving the defensive back off. Platt is throwing the ball before they make their break, and they're putting their foot in the ground, coming right back, and he's putting it exactly where it needs to be. Quickly, the line of scrimmage. Here comes Van with the Cougars. It's going to be Pratt keeping it. He's going to rough left guard. He's going to get some running room. He spins and turns, and he's going to get dropped, but not until he gets to the tight 28-yard line, a pickup of almost eight. So right now, Van Wert's starting to move the ball again. Yeah, John Miller Perry on that stop, but, you know, He's just doing a nice job of reading. Second down and three. They're going to hand off to Jackson this time. He's going to get the first down. He keeps his feet moving, and he's going to get across the 25, down to the 23, a pickup of five. And this is what they kind of do, Mike. They get things rolling. They start mixing it up. You can see that offense just kind of come unglued a little bit, and they just play free and fancy. Right now they're in a good position. Pratt's going to go ahead and do a shuttle pass in the middle again, and this time it's going to be caught by Crutchfield. And he's going to get across the 20 and get down to the 16. Number 11, Maddox Crutchfield, tackle on the play by number 16. So we've seen it all from them tonight. Yeah, we have. And think about it is, they are so quick at getting back up the line. Clyde has got to get ready to go. Quarterback's going to keep it himself, runs in the middle of the pack. And he does not get the first down. He gets down to the 13. It's going to be third down and very short. Back on the play by number so Clyde defense probably has been on the field. We're going to have a timeout. We'll take a timeout here. 6.43 to go. Timeout by Clyde. It's Van Wert up 14 to nothing. We'll be back after this on the BAS Sports Network. Check out the upcoming auctions and real estate listings at Bonnickson.com. Consign in their upcoming fall consignment auction on November 20th at consign.bonnickson.com. Bonnickson and Associates, where buying and selling has never been this easy. Contact one of their realtors or auctioneers today for more information. Ask them about their new real estate and auction packages. Your home for fun, food, sports, and spirits is also the home for value. Frickers. Frickers Everyday Values begin on Monday with boneless frickin' chicken wings. Tuesday offers traditional frickin' chicken wings. On Wednesday, enjoy a steak dinner. And on Thursday, frickin' chicken chunks. Kids eat free every day. And your favorite events are on TVs everywhere. The home for everyday values is the home for fun, food, sports, and spirits. Frick, frick, frickers. Fremont Federal Credit Union High School Football. 92 on the Wolf. 92 on the Wolf. W-O-H-F. Back to action. Third down and short. Man in motion for Van Wert left to right. They're going to give to Jackson. He gets hit up in the middle of the defense, and he does not get the first down. In fact, he's going to lose the yard back to about the 14 right in front of Brad Bannister. So we're going to have a fourth down, Brad, by Van Wert. Bolger with the tackle for Clyde. Another big fourth down for them. Oh, a huge play here for Clyde. They need to get a stop and somehow get the ball back moving in their direction. Brad's going to pitch it out to the side. Jackson's going to get it, and he gets around the corner. He's at the 10. He gets down to the 6. That time they kind of waited for him, and he got the perimeter, and he got the first down, and they're going to move the chains. Yeah, what are we, what, yeah that's what they're doing. Yeah. They're going to be gold. Jared Bolger had him stop. He had him for a stop, but uh, just couldn't get him down to the ground. So they got it down to seven, so they're first to go at the Clyde seven. The chance to go up by three scores, Van Wert. The Cougars, man in motion. Handoff sweeping wide is Jackson. Jackson's got good box foul out there. He's going to turn the corner and gets hit. Boy, that was a good defensive play by the Flyers. He only gets to the four after that. It looked like that was wide open, Mike, but running to the left, he picks up three, second down and goal at the four. Yeah, I could I can't see a number down there, Brad. Can you see who that was? I, I thought that was Abe Morrison getting to the sideline. Yeah, that probably who it was. Um we've seen Abe do that quite a few times, but again, you know, nice job of not allowing him to turn off field, just pushing it to the sideline. All right. It's six minutes to go in the half. Fourteen to nothing. Van Wert with the ball and Van Wert with the lead. And they're looking to put on more. Man in motion comes back. Here comes Pratt. He's going to throw a pass down underneath. It's the first incompletion of the night for him. 
Try to get the crutch field, and I don't know. I have to double check with our official statisticians. That's first drop, first incomplete pass for him tonight. Well, yeah, that it, and it was right there. He dropped the ball. It wasn't it? it he just dropped, it, flat out dropped it. Third down and goal at the four. Boy, the Van Wert Cougars would love to go up three scores over Clyde right now, Mike. Can I tell you what? That would put that Clyde in very panic mode. Right? Very difficult to come back from that. Especially when they have their offense that is just clicking. And yeah, where's Denzel Ward to come up and get an interception run for a score, right? So here comes a man in motion. They're looking that way. He just sidearms it out there. Nice, solid tackle by the Flyers. That time they did get it out to Mason, Madison, uh, Maddox Crutchfield, excuse me. But who on the tackle? Dylan Flyers? Overmeyer came out and made that stop. Nice, solid tackle. He came all the way from his inside linebacker spot to bring him down outside the uh, outside the box. Fourth and goal from the two. Brad Bannister, you be ready. This is right in front of you. Kind of surprised they're not thinking field goal. The field goal kicker seemed like he had a pretty good leg. Oh, absolutely. I think they're looking at the fact that they go up three scores, they might be able to go ahead and squeeze this game out. Aiden Pratt, the quarterback, he's going to run left, it looks like. And what do we have here? Timeout by Van Wert. We'll keep it right here. So, a couple big moments in this game. I tell you, the biggest one was that interception as Clyde's going down to score. Yeah, and the interception robbed them, and now this nice long drive cut the Clyde offense off the field. They got a chance to go up three scores. That doesn't happen. Clyde scores. It's a you know one possession game. Right now, it could be a three possession game just like that. And when when you look at you know what uh, what Clyde did there, you know the play was there, but that, you know they've been making some really good defensive plays as far as the secondary being able to get up, knock the ball down, or get that interception. And if they would have went down to the ground, I think if they went down to the ground, they would have called it a touchdown because they both had possession. Right. But before they went to the ground, he got ripped it. Cobble let it get ripped out of his hands, and uh, then it was up to the 50-yard line before we knew it. 5-14 to go, 14 to nothing. And the Cougars with the lead. The winner will take on the Port Clinton and Perkins winner. We'll see if we can somehow find a way to... Get that score for you if you can. All right, here we go. Fourth down and goal at the two. Pratt at quarterback. Man in motion is Jackson. They fake it. Pratt's going to run this way. He's going to throw to the end zone. And is it complete or not? They're going to say, touchdown. Oh, my. He just barely kept oh it. Oh, my. That let's go right, Brad, right in front of you. Tell us if it was good or not. Oh, it was good. Yep, yep. Three for uh, Van Wert. He came right inside. Uh, he had about five yards to the to the end zone, and he cut outside. And again, Pratt just sidearm slinging that thing quick before the defensive back even knows what was coming. Yeah, and the one thing about the uh, defense is that they came up because they thought Pratt was going to run, which left him open then. Yeah, they had, to, they had to go ahead and honor the run, right? Absolutely. We're going to take a wild card timeout. It's all Van Wert right now. The Cougars up 21 to nothing over the Flyers here in the first half of play. We'll be back with Clyde's uh, ensuing the kickoff and possession after this on 92-1, the Wolves. I loved playing high school sports. I loved the competition, the camaraderie, the bands, the crowds, all the pageantry. And I wanted to keep playing, but I graduated. No colleges called, and neither did the pros. So, to stay close to the game I loved, I decided to become a high school official. You know, a referee. When I played high school sports, I learned the importance of integrity, good sportsmanship, and respect for the rules. Now, as a high school official, I get to help model these same values to others. Maybe the colleges and the pros didn't call but the kids in Ohio did. And now, I'm enjoying the competition, the camaraderie, the bands, the crowds, and all the pageantry of high school sports all over again. Interested in becoming a licensed high school official? Go to highschoolofficials.com to learn more and begin the application process. Fremont Federal Credit Union High School Football. 92-1 The Wolf. 92-1 The Wolf. W-O-H-F. All right, welcome back. 
Here's the kickoff. It's high and it is short. Fielded by Clyde at the 30 to 35, up to the 40, and get it to the 45 yard line. Nice return there by the Flyers. Brad will tell us which Clyde up man got that, that ball. That was Will Lozier. I think he heard you last time. Yeah, well, last time he ran with the purpose, and guess what? They got the ball almost up to the 45 yard line. Um, quick, quick score here, John. Uh, Port Clinton six, Perkins zero in the second quarter. So the winner of this game will play the winner of that game. Port Clinton six to nothing over Perkins in the second quarter. All right. Well, the winner gets the joy of playing who's in this ball game next. Well, right now, the Clyde Flyers trying to get on the board. They've not been able to sniff it. They're going to flare it out here. It's going to be caught. Nice block on the outside, trying to turn the corner. And just kind of getting around that corner down here is Olsen. Olsen does turn it. He almost gets the first down to the – I'm going to spot him at the 47-yard line of Van Wert. Yeah, again, nice job of Cobble out there, stalk blocking and giving that extra yardage. So what this does, it takes Clyde out of the run game, except for the gift to Daniels there, and he does not get the first down. Boy, they stack him right up. And I don't know, Brad, let's go down to you. The, the line judge on this side looks like he maybe gave it to him, did he, or did he not? No, he marked him just a hair short. Okay. So, yeah, I, I just I think they both had a mark short. One, They were off a little bit in their markings, but I think uh -huh. they both were short. Okay, man in motion's Olsen. Clyde's third and short again. Definitely don't want to give the ball back to Van Wert, not the way the offense has been rolling today. Five guys on the line for Van Wert right now. Looking to stop that run. And it's a fumbled by Cook. Cook in trouble. Cook's going to turn the corner. Cook's going to get in the first down. We're going to have a penalty right here in front, Mike. And that could be a hold right there, usually where uh, where that penalty flag's thrown. Yep, and it is. Nice job by Cook to go ahead and make something out of nothing. Would have had the first down, but it will be a penalty. We'll set Clyde back and make it third down, and we'll call it seven from their own 48. You know, nice heads-up play by Jaden Cook be able to pick that ball up and move it around. Like you say, it would have been a first down. No, that's going to take it back, excuse me, and make it uh, third and 11 from the 44. Ten-yard penalty. So the Flyers have been forced to have to throw the ball. Mike takes them out of their normal MO offensively. Ball control and grind it out, and that's uh, that's been the recipe for Van Wert so far. Cook rolling his right. He's stepping on the pocket. He's going to throw a bullet out here. It's going to be caught. And getting hit out of bounds after he caught the ball, but I don't think they got the first down. Let's go to Brad Banster. Brad, it looks like to me like he ran out short. Yeah, he's going to be short. Uh, they're a little bit uh, upset over here on the sideline. I thought maybe he got hit out of bounds as well, but they're not going to throw that flag. So they pick up all the yardage from the penalty. It looked like the receiver didn't wasn't quite sure where the where the yardage was. We ran straight out. Could have maybe extended that ball. Either way, it's fourth and very short for Clyde. 413 to go. They're down 21 to nothing. And biggest deficit that they've had so far this year. Yeah, it is. It is. They've not been in this territory, and they want to take a timeout. And we'll keep it right here. So, Brad Bannister down the sideline. Tell us a little bit about the conditions. Have things changed for you at all, or is it still pretty much what you thought? Uh, it's still pretty blustery down here. We're in the upper 30s now, probably 38, 39 degrees. Still probably a 15, 20 mile an hour wind. So you can definitely feel things uh, down here on the sideline. You know, Brad, blustery is a pretty big word by a math teacher, you know. So I'm going to tell you what I've. Well, I'm going to hang my hat on that word. But <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate that. Another, How many fourth and shorts has Clyde had today, Mike? I mean, it's been fourth and short for them all night. So. Yeah, and they've been able to pick them up. Except for one. So, but, uh, you know, I, I believe it's four. So they've been able to get three out of the four. So this will make number five. There's always a game like this when you're playing, especially in the playoffs, where the game can swing one way or the other. And again, that interception down deep swung this game strongly in the favor of Van Wert. It could have been a one possession game. It's a three possession game now, and Clyde chasing points here. 4.13 to go in the half. They've got fourth down and short. And Jane Cook is not under center. He's looking over to his coach. And they're looking for the play call. And let's see if they can convert. Jane Cook, let's see. He's going to keep it himself. He runs behind. He's going to get the first down. He keeps the spins. And he turns and fights. And he gets inside the 40-yard line down to the 39. Nice gutsy play by Jaden Cook to pick up the first down for Clyde. Moving right to left with 4.07 to go. Down 21 to nothing. Yeah, Jaden Cook, nice job. He got hit three times. He was spun out of one tackle, just ran through another tackle to get those extra yards. 
See if the fighters can get on the board. Cook looking, looking, looking. He's going to throw it out here. It's a bullet. It's going to be caught. It'll be dropped at about the 27. But it should be a first down, and it is down to the 26-yard line. Nice pass. And who caught that, Brad Bannister? That was Cobble down here. So Cobble able to haul it in. Nice, strong throw by Cook. Moving right to left. Here they go quickly again. Daniel's stuck in the middle of the line, and they had three guys to meet him there. Nowhere to go. Yeah, what's, what's happening is they're kind of chipping, trying to get up on the linebackers. But as soon as they chip off the lineman, that lineman's getting off the initial block, right. and they can play. Second and ten. Three receivers to the right side for Jaden Cook. Moving right to left. He's back to throw. He's going to flare it out here to Olsen. Olsen gets a block, but he stops in order to go. Cuts back to the middle, and he'll pick up just a few to the 25. No room to dance out there tonight, and that time he just picked up a yard or two, Mike. And the defensive backfield for Van Wert is extremely impressive, not just in run coverage, but their passing coverage, yeah, too. Yeah, Nate Jackson did a great job out there. He was getting stalk blocked, but he was pushing the receiver back. And that's why there isn't very many yards right there because there is nowhere to go. And that allowed the rest of the defense to come over and make the stop. Third down and eight, 245 to go. Again, Van Roo with a three-score lead, 21 to nothing over Clyde here. Co-champions of the Sandusky Bay Conference Lake Division. Cook back to throw. He's looking, looking. He's got time. He's going to roll. And Cook is going to put his head down. He's going to stutter step, and oh. Cook just pancaked. That time... Maybe one dance step too many for Jaden Cook as he got pancaked at the 25-yard line. Now, let me tell you who put that pancake on. That was Aiden Pratt, the quarterback from the other side, said, hey, I'm here to play defensive end, and uh, you're not going to run my way. Jaden Cook that time got a welcome to Van Wert type of style hit. Yeah, but he bounced right back up. He did. To go. He did. Fourth down for Clyde again. They've been trying to convert fourth downs all game. Fourth down and eight. Cook, oh, high snap bad. over his that's head. Bad. He's going to pick it up. He's going to go ahead. He's going to throw it down the right sideline. It's going to be, what was it? Incomplete, Brad. Incomplete pass, and uh, it was intended for Olsen. It would have been out of bounds anyway if he would have caught okay. it. So they turn it over on downs for the second time tonight. And we've got, like, uh, probably three-fourths of the stance here wanting an interference call. He did get hit, but it was almost simultaneously. And where he hit him, he was about three yards out of bounds. Sure. So, all right, Van Wert with the 21 to nothing lead. Clyde will get the ball to start the second half. Boy, a touchdown in this half, Mike. And then getting the second half would have helped them a little bit, kind of tighten things up. But Van Wert going on in halftime up by three scores. They're going to be pretty confident coming out. So, Pratt is back at quarterback. He's got, again, an empty backfield. Looking for him to run the football. He's going to throw it out here, and it's going to be caught and running into traffic, still turning the corner and picking up about four yards to the 20, we'll say 27-yard line. You know, they had that stop for no gain, no gain at all, and he was able to break through that tackle. Yeah, he and, and Crutchfield did a nice job of just getting around the corner. And You know, and they, they do pick up positive yardage once they're in the middle of traffic, that's for sure. Very good football team, the Van Wert Cougars, last year's Division IV state champions, acting like it here tonight in this first half against Clyde. Aiden Pratt back at quarterback again. He's back. He's looking. He's looking. He's looking to be flushed out of the pocket. He's still rolling. He's going to throw it here, and it'll be caught. It seems like he's Houdini. He can buy himself time, and he just flings a bread banister down to you. I, I'd have to say he looks like Brett Favre, to be honest, just the way he just flings it out there. He's a gunslinger, man. He gets running over here, and because he throws it sidearm, he just does it so quick that he just flips that ball with so much uh, zip on it. It, it gets to those uh, boundary passes uh, real, real nice. Yeah, and he was running away from Logan Holmer, had him in his sights, but uh, you know he was able to get away from it and throw it out there and make that completion. First and 10 at the 35. Man in motion. Looking to go that way. Pratt rolling, rolling. He's going down the deep side. He's got somebody open there. It's going to be incomplete, and that was great defensive coverage on the backside by Clyde. Yeah, I believe that was Olsen that uh, covered on that. Uh, I'm sorry, Jaron Bolger. Garrett Gunter was the intended receiver. Bolger on the coverage makes it second down and 10. That's actually the first deep pass that they've attempted all day. It sure is. Everything's been 5, 10 yep. yards at the most. So the Clyde Flyers and their resilient football team. I don't know if they're 21 points down resilient or not. We're going to find out at halftime, but let's see if they can keep 
Van Wert out of the end zone for the first time here tonight. Jackson, Aiden Pratt's going to keep it. He's going to spin, and Dylan Obermeyer trips him up. Yeah, nice shot by Dylan because if Dylan wouldn't have got him, there was a lot of green field in front of him. Pick up a four, moving left to right, third down, and we'll say six. 108 and counting here. I would suspect that uh, Van Wert's going to try and take a couple shots here, Mike. Oh, they got to get that first down before they do anything. Or we might see them punting the ball. Maddox Crutchfield's been on the receiving end of a lot of the big passes here tonight, along with his brother, Connor Pratt. Third down and six. Clock running. Man in motion. They're rolling up. They're going to just flare it out here. And it's going to be a nice open field tackle by the Flyers. That time he got it out here to Brian Parker. And one of the Clyde defenders read it perfectly. Threw him for a loss. It'll be fourth down and six. 37 seconds to go. That was Cobble coming up. That's making what I up. thought. I, I really can't see that number. But uh, Cobble did a nice job of just keeping him in front, keeping his shoulders square. Was able to get him down and not allow that to get the first down. It is 8 o'clock here tonight in Northwest Ohio. You're listening to WOHF Bellevue Sandusky. 92-1 The Wolf. John Cullen and Mike Martin. Brad Bannister. Little injury update here. Max Myers, it was an ankle, which, you know, no injury is good. But sometimes you'd rather see that than a knee injury. So, uh, but it doesn't look like he will return because he's on crutches right now. So, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a good indication. Best of luck to him healing up. Okay, fourth down, and they're going to punt the football with 37 seconds to go. First punt of the football game for Van Wert here tonight. Snap is good. Here's the punt. It's a low runner, and it's going to go out of bounds, and Clyde's going to get the ball about the 40. And let's say they're going to spot the 38-yard line. So Clyde defense holds for the first time tonight, really. Yeah, no, really. This is the first time. Really... I mean, they turned it over on downs right. one time. Yep. But other than that, they've scored. The Clyde offense has moved it. They've not been able to score it. And with that, Van Wert has taken advantage of that. 31 seconds to go. Clyde Flyers with the ball at their own 38. Of course, they've run most of their deep patterns so far tonight, Mike. I don't know what else they would have to show. And they're going to go ahead and throw across the middle. It's going to be high and incomplete. Yeah, well covered again out there. Cobble, intended for Cobble. But uh, two defensive backs right there. You know, one Clyde receiver that has not seen a lot of action, Griffin Nuffs. Yeah, you're right. And Griffin Nuffs has got some wheels. Maybe there's going to be an off receiver that has some opportunity, Mike, depending on how that defense is reading these patterns. Either way, he's going to come in motion to the near side. Jane Cook back. He's going to throw a possession pass out here. It's going to be caught and stepping out of bounds. I believe it's going to be Wilson. And that'll get the ball to the 44. Pick up a six to make it third down and four. 23 seconds to go in this one. The first half of play. The winner will take on Port Clinton Sandusky Perkins, and at last count it was Port Clinton up six to nothing. Again, same type of possession pass, but I think this time he threw it low. Did he complete uh, that? Got his say, caught his hand, got his hands yep. underneath that Brad Bannister. Yep, he scooped it up off the ground, so it'll be a first down. Who but was the that? The clock is running. 16 seconds have, to go. Clyde has no timeouts left. And they went ahead and just checked it. Thir 13 seconds. So, Mike Martin, uh, tough first half for the Clyde Flyers, to be honest. And, and it was a first drive, which was just, you know, took under two minutes for Van Wert to score. They put, kind of put Clyde on notice, and the offense just has not been able to get on track. This Van Wert defense has been spectacular. And it's going to be Cook. He's got to throw one deep here, and it's going to be incomplete. And, you know, the, flan, the fans obviously calling for a flag, and, there is some hanging and pushing right there, but yeah. they're not going to call that no, at this no. point of a regional semifinal. Game. No, you're not going to call that. And he was looking back, and he right. actually made an attempt to go for the ball. Now, if he had just attempted to go at the receiver, sure, throw the flag. But when you're attempting to go for the ball, you're not going to call an interference because he was not holding him or preventing him from getting there. Stay tuned for our halftime show 
be coming up right after this, and we'll get ready for the second half of play. Right now, uh, the number two and three seeds fighting it out here, but right now the three seed Van Wert is having their way. Cook back to throw. He's got Austin Time. He's flushed out of the pocket. He's going to step out of the pocket, step again, keep on running, and Jaden Cook's got the ball. He's trying to turn to the outside looking for a block, and he's going to scramble his way down to the 25, and that's how the first half is going to end. So Jaden Cook with a nice drive, but at halftime, it's Van Wert, 21, Clyde nothing, and we'll stay tuned for our halftime show here tonight. You're listening to Fremont Federal Credit Union High School Football, and it is Division Four, Region 14, Semifinal action on 92 on the Wolf Bar, the BAS Sports Network. Bad hair day, bad day at the office, bad day behind the wheel. Hey, stuff happens even to the best of us. At least your car insurance rate doesn't have to take a hit. Hit Erie Rate Lock from Erie Insurance. Gives you a great rate that stays put until you change a car, driver, or your address. Plus, seriously good service. Now that's something to smile about. Your local Erie agent is Wealthy Insurance Group. Get a quote at 419-334-4477. Or visit WealthyInsurance.com. Erie Rate Lock does not guarantee continued insurance coverage and is not available in all states. Taking care of each other is what community is all about. That's a priority at Hanneman Chudzinski Keller Funeral Home. For over a century, they've proudly served the Fremont community and surrounding area with personal, compassionate care. They're dedicated to helping families create personalized, meaningful final tributes to honor your loved one's life. For information, call or visit HanemanFH.com. Hanneman Chudzinski Keller Funeral Home. They've expanded their family to better serve yours. Fremont Federal Credit Union High School Football. 92-1 the Wolf. 92-1 the Wolf. W-O-H-F. From the Ohio News Network, this is the Ohio Education Association tonight in high school football. Named best sports program in the country by the National Association of State Radio Networks. Tonight in high school football is presented by Bex Hybrids and by Ohio for Responsible Gambling. Now here's your host, Skip Mossick. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight in high school football's halftime reports. Well, how did the first weekend of the expanded playoffs go? We'll discuss that as well as some of the other fall sports championships upcoming with tim streed of the ohsaa next on the ohio news network farmers at heart at beck's that's who we are for over 100 years the beck family has lived and farmed in central indiana today we're proud to serve a dedicated community of farmers in ohio to us helping farmers succeed means so much more than just being a great seed supplier Our family of employees and dealers are committed to helping farmers seek new challenges, push boundaries, and innovate in an ever-changing industry. That's what makes Beck's different. We love what we do. We are and will remain farmers at heart. I'm Scott DeMauro, president of the Ohio Education Association. I'm proud to bring you tonight's game on behalf of OEA's 123,000 members. We teach in the public schools and state universities. We drive your kids to school, serve them lunch, and keep our schools clean and safe. We also coach the teams on the field. We're committed to making sure every student has the opportunity to experience the joy of learning and to succeed, regardless of where they live or their family's income. We believe in great public schools for all students. No bones about it, we have the meats. One bite and you're going to love Arby's Boneless Wings. It's six or nine pieces of tender all-white meat chicken in a crispy breading, sauced and tossed in hot honey sauce. Choose your favorite side to round out your meal. Then satisfy your sweet tooth with Arby's Caramel Cinnamon Shake. It's a creamy caramel cinnamon experience topped with whipped cream and a sprinkle of cinnamon. Stop in today. Arby's in Fremont, Port Clinton, Clyde, and Huron. Pick up your 2021-2022 Fremont Ross Athletic Booster Club card for only $10 this year. They have 43 local merchants on the card. Plus, you receive a little giant t-shirt at Phase 1. Cards are available at Denny's, Steinley GMC Cadillac, and at Fremont Ross High School. The Booster Club is once again the proud sponsor of tonight's Player of the Game. Find them on Facebook at Fremont Ross Athletic Boosters for monthly meeting updates and events. Go Little Giants! Fremont Federal Credit Union High School Football. 92-1 The Wolf. 92-1 The Wolf. W-O-H-F. 
This is tonight in high school football on the Ohio News Network. Once again, here's Skip Mossick. We are presented by Bex Hybrids at Bex. They are and will remain farmers at heart. And welcome back, everyone. Halftime of your game broadcast. We're joined this evening by Tim Street of the OHSAA. Tim, thanks for your time. First full season with the expanded playoffs. How did everything go in week one? We knew there'd be some lopsided scores, as there always are, and some upsets, as we usually see as well. Yeah, we were real happy with this, Skip. Thanks for having me on. Uh, you know, you're right that there's always going to be some lopsided scores. We have that in the regular season, too. Um, I, I, uh, I was... Uh, pleased to see that at least one seed won a first round game at every at every seed so we had a 16 win we had a 15 win we actually had some really close games where maybe a 14 or 13 didn't win but it was a really close game so i think it was a a pretty normal first round there were some lopsided scores but you also had a lot of upsets but overall we were very happy with it There, there was just such an energy with more schools in the playoffs with more communities getting that chance to have one more game. And uh, we, we, we were happy with it. And, and now here we are in the second round. And uh, now we're back to the normal field that we would have started with. We spoke last month about digital ticketing being in place for the postseason. How did everything go in regards to that? Yeah, we were happy with the digital ticketing. You know, we, we have uh, observed some other, uh, wh- whether it's colleges or, or, or universities or, or high schools that they have uh, some technical issues with that. We were really happy that our issues were very minimal. And I think a lot of that is due to the fact that so many schools were using digital ticketing for their regular season games anyway. So I think it's the thing that is here to stay. You know, I, I don't think uh, schools are going to revert back to uh, taking cash at the gate. I think people are comfortable with it now. And and just knowing that that is how the playoffs are going to go, I think more schools will do that during the regular season as well. And speaking of the playoffs, tell us about the ticket plans in place for the state championships up in Canton. Yeah, we're, we're excited about that. So tickets are on sale for the state championship games in Canton, and that's uh, December 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. Um, I know that there are still some tickets that remain for the club level, which is the uh, level six in the press box. It's a large area with uh, – um, big concession stand area, lot, lots of tables, and, and that is a premium ticket. Um, but uh, th- those are all available. In fact, you can even get a VIP parking pass along with that ticket. Uh, it's uh, ohsa.org slash tickets, and you can go to any postseason tournament event you want there. But um, we're just so happy that we're back to normal where fans that, that are traditionally used to making that trip to Canton for the weekend to, to catch five, six, or even all seven games, go over and check out the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Uh, it, it's just a great weekend, and uh, we're, we're cooking. We're, we're uh, glad that uh, people are starting to make plans to get over there. I know this is a very busy time of year with field hockey and cross-country championships this weekend. Next weekend, volleyball and soccer. How exciting is it to have those soccer championships at the new home of the crew, Lower.com Field in downtown Columbus? Yeah, soccer's going downtown, Lower.com Field. We're, we're really excited to be there. It's just a, an unbelievable place to to play soccer, our schools are going to be real excited to be there. And I think the biggest thing with soccer is that the crew wants to be the home of high school soccer in Ohio. Uh, when, when As the stadium got done, they reached out and said, we want to host your soccer state championships downtown at the new v- venue. And so we were real excited about that. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it's, uh, you know, tournament time. We got volleyball back at Wright State University next week. So that's great to be back in that uh, really nice venue. Um, this weekend, cross country field hockey, and uh, the, of course, the football playoffs roll on while all that is going on. So we're just uh, so happy to be back to hopefully, uh, you know, as normal a school year as we can, and see lots of folks coming out. Tim Street, Director of Information Services with the Ohio High School Athletic Association. Tim, we know it's a busy time of year for you. We appreciate you coming on, okay? Thanks, Skip. Thanks for having me on. Again, this is the Ohio Education Association tonight in high school football halftime report presented by Bex Hybrids and Ohio for Responsible Gambling. And we'll be right back on the Ohio News Network. Bex recognizes this week's player with heart, K.P. DeLarber from Tenora High School for his commitment and passion on the field and within the farming community. I've been playing with the same group of kids since shoot, since we were real little, playing in flag football. <laughs> so, I mean, just about everything about the team and 
how we have such a great camaraderie and connection. KP's big into football and baseball, as well as his church youth group. But on the farm, he really shines. He's been in 4-H the past eight years and shows animals at the county fair. They've got goats, rabbits, and steers, and they actually raise goats to breed and sell to the local 4-H kids. That's always a good thing, too. It's always pretty cool to watch them grow. It means a lot, honestly, to uh, me and not just me but our whole family i mean my mom grew up on a farm and it's just been part of the family and it's more or less like a tradition thing at bex we are in will remain farmers at heart check out the upcoming auctions and real estate listings at bonnickson.com consign and their upcoming fall consignment auction on november 20th at consign.bonnickson.com Bonnickson and Associates, where buying and selling has never been this easy. Contact one of their realtors or auctioneers today for more information. Ask them about their new real estate and auction packages. Hi, my name is Dr. Charles Hall, and I'm proud to share with the community that PT Services has recently opened a clinic at 1800 West State Street in Fremont. I've worked with PT Services for approximately 40 years, including referral, personal, and high schools. I recommend uh, PT Services for their therapy needs. It can be located at 419-332-6709. Go local teams. Fremont Federal Credit Union High School Football. 92-1 The Wolf. 92-1 The Wolf. W-O-H-F. This, this is O-N-N. Discover when video games become gambling at changethegameohio.org. This message brought to you by Ohio for Responsible Gambling. Our thanks again to Tim Street of the OHSAA for joining us tonight. Enjoy the second half of your ball game. I'm Skip Mossick on the Ohio News Network. This has been the Ohio Education Association tonight in high school football. Presented by Bex Hybrids and by Ohio for Responsible Gambling. A reminder, you can listen to many of our affiliate broadcasts from across the state at onnradio.com from the Ohio News Network. Pick up your 2021-2022 Fremont Ross Athletic Booster Club card for only $10 this year. They have 43 local merchants on the card. Plus, you receive a Little Giant t-shirt at Phase 1. Cards are available at Denny's, Steinle GMC Cadillac, and at Fremont Ross High School. The Booster Club is once again the proud sponsor of tonight's Player of the Game. Find them on Facebook at Fremont Ross Athletic Boosters for monthly meeting updates and events. Go Little Giants! Crown Battery, locally owned and operated, is pleased to support tonight's teams and takes this time to wish them luck for a successful season. The staff at Crown Battery recognizes the importance of teamwork both in and out of the classroom. That is why everyone at Crown Battery is a proud sponsor of not only tonight's broadcast, but a proud sponsor and contributor to our community, its athletic programs, and its educational infrastructure. Good luck and thank you from all the staff at Crown Battery, supplying new power since 19. 19- Get the ultimate in carpet performance that is pet and kid friendly with carpeting from Fremont Floor Covering. See the new styles that are made of sure soft nylon with built-in microband technology and a lifetime pet and soil resistant warranty. This carpeting is also backed by a 100-day consumer satisfaction warranty. See store for details. For easy maintenance carpet, get to Fremont Floor Covering near the corner of North Front and State Street in Fremont. Good luck for a winning season. Hi, I'm Nick Cray, CEO of Fremont Federal Credit Union. We are proud to sponsor high school sports on Eagle 99, 92-1 The Wolf, and 100.9 Coast Country. Stop into any of our convenient locations to check out the credit union difference. We offer checking account options with lots of perks, all with a free debit card, free online banking, and mobile access with the convenience of nationwide shared branching. Investing in our communities and our youth are what we're all about. Visit us today at FremontFCU.com. Membership eligibility required, federally insured by NCUA. Fremont Federal Credit Union High School Football. 92-1 The Wolf. 92-1 The Wolf. W-O-H-F. And welcome back to the home of the Napoleon Wildcats here in Napoleon, Ohio. And at halftime, it is all Van Wert. The Cougars, last year's Division IV state champions, are rolling here tonight against the Clyde Flyers. 
21 to nothing. This game's had some really memorable moments, to say the least. Uh, I'll give you some of the uh, scoring and some of the highlights. We'll take a break, and then we'll have Mike Martin give us some stats. The stats don't reflect a 21 to nothing game. Van Wert got the ball at their own 39, and they went seven plays, 61 yards in less than two minutes. And it was Pratt with an eight-yard run, the quarterback. The extra point was good, seven to nothing. Uh, Van Wert, Clyde got the ball. They went three and out, only gained six yards. They had to punt them. Van Wert came back with 11-play drive. They were threatening again. Got down on Clyde 42 and turned it over on downs. Clyde then returned. They had a, a six, seven play drive that they turned it over on downs. And that was a critical moment because then Van Wert got it to Clyde to, at the 21. Clyde got down to the 21 yard line of Van Wert and turned it over. So Van Wert got it and they went eight plays, 79 yards. It was Jackson with a three yard run with 140 to go in the first quarter. It's 14 to nothing, Van Wert. Then Clyde went all the way down. They had, let's see, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15, 16 play drive that ended up with an interception down near the goal line. Both players went up. Cabo had it, and the defender from Van Wert ripped it out of his hands, stole it, ran it out of the end zone up all the way to the 38 yard line of the Flyers. Excuse me, to the 48 yard line of the Flyers. Van Wert then goes ahead. And they run another long drive to go up 21 to nothing. The Flyers then had a pretty good drive, ran about 10 plays, turnover downs. Van Wert punted. Clyde got the ball to end the first half. They ran about five or six plays. Jaden Cook scrambles for about 25 yards, but they end the half at 21 to nothing. Key point of the game was the interception as Clyde was scoring to try to cut it within one score. Uh, Both guys went up and they had it, Mike Martin and. The defender decided he wanted it a little bit more and ripped it out. If Clyde scores there, it's 14-7. to 7. It's a completely different ball game. But right now it's been Aiden Pratt, the quarterback, for Van Word has really commanded the entire football game. He did not start last year on the championship football team here at Van Word. He was a backup. But he's come in here tonight, and he's proven that he is more than publicized here Early. Um, the other score we have at halftime, the Port Clinton Redskins leading the Perkins Pirates 13 to 7 at halftime. So the winner of that game will take on the winner of this one. Clyde, we'll get the ball to start the second half of play. We'll take a timeout. We'll get back and get Mike Martin in here and get some numbers and talk about it. Clyde will get the ball to start the second half of play. Going to have to pay, play a perfect second half. They want to win this one here tonight in advance. We'll bring you all the action. Glad you're with us here tonight. And you're listening to Fremont Federal Credit Union. Playoff football action here live tonight on 92.1 The Wolf, part of the BAS Sports Network. Miller Super Value and Clyde is the place to shop for great savings on groceries. Each week, hundreds of items are discounted to help you save even more. Check out their expanded meat department. For a great supper, shop Miller's extensive deli for fried chicken, wings, great salads, and side dishes. Take and Big Pizza and Fresh Daily Sushi are now available. Miller Super Value, your hometown grocery, is proud of our Clyde Flyers. Go Flyers! Eric from Wendy's here to tell you about our newest addition to the Made to Crave menu, the Big Bacon Cheddar Sandwich. It all starts with a fresh, never-frozen patty or a classic chicken filet. Add American cheese, our new bacon jam, three strips of bacon, onion tanglers, creamy cheddar cheese spread, and a new toasted cheddar bun. Take a bite into this sweet, cheesy sandwich for a taste like never before. Parlay this amazing sandwich with Wendy's new and improved fries, and you'll be saying, now that's my Wendy's. Hi, my name is Dr. Charles Hall, and I'm proud to share with the community that PT Services has recently opened a clinic at 1800 West State Street in Fremont. I've worked with PT Services for approximately 40 years, including referral, personal, and high schools. I recommend uh, PT Services for their therapy needs. It can be located at 419-332-6709. Go local teams. Pick up your 2021-2022 Fremont Ross Athletic Booster Club card for only $10 this year. They have 43 local merchants on the card. Plus, you receive a little giant t-shirt at Phase 1. Cards are available at Denny's, Steinley GMC Cadillac, and at Fremont Ross High School. The Booster Club is once again the proud sponsor of tonight's Player of the Game. 
Find them on Facebook at Fremont Ross Athletic Boosters for monthly meeting updates and events. Go Little Giants! Fremont Federal Credit Union High School Football. 92-1 the Wolf. 92-1 the Wolf. W-O-H-F. All right, welcome back. It's halftime in Napoleon, and it has been a very dry and dreary night for the Clive Flyers so far. Van Wert comes out, scores on the first drive, and they kind of just have dominated the football game here early, Mike Martin. Now, when we go over the numbers, you're not going to believe that. It doesn't seem like a dominated game when it talks about the numbers. But at all in all, it has been their defense, I think, Mike, not only just their offense, their defense is what clapped the Clyde offense out of the end zone, and that's why they've got this lead right now. 21 to nothing. Clyde will get the ball to start the second half. Now I'm going to turn it over to my partner, Mike Martin, and go ahead and go over some stats and give us kind of the uh, analytic side of the football game, Mike. I'll turn it over to you. All right, thanks, Sean. Right now, Van Word has 17 first downs. Clyde has nine. Net yards rushing, Van Word has 110. Clyde has 97. Net yards passing, this is where the big difference is. Van Wert has 136 yards, Clyde has 68. So, total net yards, Van Wert has 246, Clyde 165. It's been a very well played game tonight as far as penalties go. There's only been two penalties on the field tonight, and both those penalties, penalties were against Clyde. They have two for 18. Time of possession, now that's where it gets a little miscued. Van Wert had the ball for 14 minutes and 28 seconds. Clyde only had it for nine minutes. Individual stats for Van Wert. And like we said early on before this game started, Van Wert's going to go how Adrian Pratt goes. And so far, Adrian Pratt's been doing very well. He has 14 attempts and has 78 yards and has one touchdown rushing. Nate Jackson has 10 attempts, 34 yards, and has one touchdown as well. On the other side, Clyde, Michael Daniels, has attempted 12 times for a net of 61 yards, and Jaden Cook has six rushes for 36 yards. Passing, Adrian Pratt has been almost perfect tonight. He has attempted 19 times, completed 17 of those, and no interceptions, 136 yards, and one touchdown. Jaden Cook has attempted 22 times, Completed 11, has one interception, and uh, he has 68 yards. Pass receiving, a number of receivers for Van Wert. Max Crutchfield has seven catches, 45 yards. Connor Pratt has five catches, 36 yards, one touchdown. Garrett Gunter has two catches for 21. Braylon Parker has one for a no gain. And Nate Jackson has one for eight. On the other side for Clyde, Caden Olson has four catches for 25 yards. Brady Wilson has four catches for 21 yards. Andrew Cobble has two catches for 18 yards. Griffin Noss has one catch for four yards. And as far as the punting goes, Jaden Cook had one punt. It was a pooch punt. And a very nice punt was 49 yards. So that flipped the field, but... Van Wert was able to drive down and score on that. Nate Stenman had one punt for 23 yards. Mike, I look at one statistic here that really stands out to me in the receiving by uh, Van Wert. Crutchfield seven for only 45 yards. Average is six yards a catch. And what that tells you is their main receiver is possession passing down the sideline. That's how they keep their drives going. Same thing with Connor Pratt, five for 36 yards. His average 7.2. His longest 14 yards. They've not had a pass longer. They do have Trey Lauder who caught one for 26 yards. That's the longest pass that they've had tonight. Everything's been six, seven yards. Uh, Gunter had two for an uh, average uh, longest 11. So they're not throwing the ball deep. They're just throwing the ball to move the chains. And this is a football team that is as balanced as we've seen this year. But as we said before, their offense is great, but I think it's their defense what's made the difference. They've kept Clyde from getting in the end zone and getting any kind of momentum to pull up tight here in order to get ready. We'll take a final timeout. We'll get back and size up the second half. Again, 21 and nothing. Van Wert with the lead. Clyde will be getting the ball to start the second half. Let's see what adjustments they've made, and we're going to bring the second half of action to you here live tonight on 92 on the Wolf, part of the BAS Sports Network. <laughs> I loved playing high school sports. 
I love the competition, the camaraderie, the bands, the crowds, all the pageantry, and I wanted to keep playing. But I graduated. No college is called, and neither did the pros. So, to stay close to the game I loved, I decided to become a high school official. You know, a referee. When I played high school sports, I learned the importance of integrity, good sportsmanship, and respect for the rules. Now, as a high school official, I get to help model these same values to others. Maybe the colleges and the pros didn't call, but the kids in Ohio did. And now, I'm enjoying the competition, the camaraderie, the bands, the crowds, and all the pageantry of high school sports all over again. Interested in becoming a licensed high school official? Go to highschoolofficials.com to learn more and begin the application process. Fremont Federal Credit Union High School Football. 92-1 the Wolf. 92-1 the Wolf. W-O-H-F. All right, welcome back to Napoleon Wildcat Field. It is the second half of play on the Region 14 Division 4 semifinal. Right now, the Portland Redskins winning over Perkins 13-7. to The winner will take on the winner of this game. And right now, the Van Wert Cougars are in charge 21 to nothing. Clyde will get the football. Uh, Brad Bannister, down to you. It seems like nothing's changed down there with the elements, has it? No, nope. weather-wise, still feels just as good as it did at the start of the game. <laughs> <laughs> and that was spoken like a true professional. Brad Bannister brought to you by Fremont Frickers. So here we go. McGurkin kicks it up. It's going to be caught by the Flyers at the 20, to the 25, to the 30. Cutting back to the outside, cutting up in the middle again. Nice run. Running hard across the 35. And Clyde will get it first and 10 at the 38. Mike Martin, if you are Coach Carter, what are you doing with your offense to um, make changes? Or how are you going to come out? How are you going to play this game? Well, one thing that they did last week, and they were very successful, is they were double teaming where they were going to run on the defensive line and then chipping up to the linebacker. That's not been effective because the line has been making a lot of the plays. So they're going to have to stick on those double teams and let Michael Daniels find the holes. All right, here we go. Looking, flare pass out here, caught. Cutting up the middle of the field, spin and turn is Olsen. Olsen's going to get to the 45-yard line, pick up about seven. That's been a pretty solid play for the Flyers here tonight early. Yeah, good job by Griffin out there making that uh, making that stalk block. The defensive backfield from Van Wert is as impressive as I've seen this year. Cook, back to throw. He's looking. He's going to throw again. It's going to be caught. And it's going to be caught at the 49-yard line. First and 10, Clyde. So Clyde's going out. And they're going to possession pass here early, Mike. Yeah, they're trying to get down the field. If you're going to play off, get down the field. Giving that zone, giving at least five-yard cushion. Here comes Daniels. He'll get the ball. And he's going to get stopped. He's going to pick up about three. Turtle. And spot the ball at the 47. Excuse me, pick up a two. Turner Witten on that stop, and, and that's one where he get he's getting double teamed, but he's still able to come up and make the play. So Jaden Cook, the senior, plays basketball also. Here we go. He's going to throw a possession pass, caught, no, dropped. So that's the second time we've had a flyer drop the football out there. Brad Bannister, down to you. Yeah, that was out to Griffin Noss. Just could not hang on to the ball, and again, Lots of Van Wert players right in the vicinity. Yeah, and Cook put it right where it had to be, and that yeah. was that was definitely not uh, a fault of the pass. Third down and long. Cook is going to pump fake. He's in trouble, and he's going to get sacked. First time tonight, and he's going to get sacked back at the 45. That will force the Flyers in and have to punt this first possession of the second half. That was That's unfortunate. That was quarterback, second quarterback. Aiden Pratt was on that sack. Aiden Pratt, six foot four, 200 pounds, throws the ball from every angle there is. I think Clyde feels like they're in four down territory. Let's see if he's just going to pooch on it, Mike. Probably will. Daniels moves to his left. 10 15. Here comes a man in motion. Fourth down and 16. I haven't seen a 16-yard pass play by the Flyers yet. That's a high snap. And Cook kicks it, and it's a low runner. And it's going to be off the side of his foot. He's upset with it. The ball gets down to the 35. It'll be first and 10. Van Wert at the 35. And that time the snap was a little high for Cook. And, no, nope, he just kind of kicked a runner. Yeah, and, and 
you know, Cook is not a rugby style punter no. where, you know, you run it to the side and punt it. And uh, I know he wanted to keep it low into the wind, but uh, that was a little lower than I think he expected. Aiden Pratt back, takes the handoff, runs off left tackle, gets hit and dropped. He'll pick up a yard to the 36. Still an overmire right there to make that stop. So, Mike, let me ask a question. So you've got a three-score lead. You just kind of run the ball and try to just run the clock the rest of the night and, and not worry about feeling your defense is doing pretty well. You kind of just not worry about taking a lot of time. Just, I mean, take a lot of time and just methodically work it. Yeah, and but you're still going to run your offense. And there's a pass oh, play out nice there. We caught a nice throw down there, and again, that's Overmeyer. No, that was Abe oh, Morrison. Abe Morrison read that perfectly. They passed that play over to Crutchfield. Crutchfield didn't didn't have anywhere to go. Thrown back to the 35, actually the 34 yard line. So there'll be a loss. So they make it uh, third down and nine. Morrison with a nice play. And looking, looking, looking. The quarterback's going to run it. This time he's going to take off and run. He's got good blocking downfield. He's going to get the first down and more, and he'll step out of bounds at the 48-yard line. He is so elusive running that ball. He just made one of the Clyde defenders go to his knees. He just put his foot in the ground. Broke his ankles. Yeah, he put his foot in the ground and just turned to the right, and the Clyde defender just went down on his knees. Well, I'd like to find out what other sports that, that Aiden Grant plays because he, he's got to be a baseball player. There's no doubt about it. I would the way he throws Pitcher. the ball, yeah. But uh, he is very athletic for his size. He's going to flare it out here to Jackson. I tell you what, they've done a good job still blocking on the outside, but this will go for two yards to the Clyde 45. Yeah, good pursuit by the Clyde defense to get over there and make that stop. Once, uh, once they start going lateral on the field, the whole Clyde defense starts flowing over that way and about three people on that tackle. So time of possession on the side of Van Wert, that defense has played a lot of snaps. Here's Jackson again. He's going to break through the hole and he's going to get dropped. He won't get the first down. They'll be third down and short and they'll get to the Clyde 38. Pickup of almost seven. I tell you what, he's had a good night tonight down to Brad Bannister. Jackson, that second running back, has done well for Van Wert. Yeah, he provides a nice different uh, pace. And Clyde's going to stop them, but they're going to go ahead and have a penalty for too many men in the field. Two of their defenders did not get off the field in time. That'll be a first down for Van Wert. You know, Van Wert, they did not substitute anyone, and they came up to the line very, very quickly. And Clyde could not, like you said, John, Clyde could not get their players off. They tried to go into a red, a goal line defense, right? and uh, they could just couldn't get off the field quick enough. Gave him the first down. Yeah, I could see it watching it happen right here. I didn't even have to count players because I saw two of them still on the field. So first and ten, moving left to right, the Van Wert Cougars, last year's Division Four state champions, and in a position where another score here that could really make things difficult for the Flyers. Quick pass out, caught, and pick up about three. And the other thing, let's go down to Brad Bands for Brad. It seems like when the receivers from Van Wert get the ball in those short possession passes, they're immediately straight up field. Oh, yeah, they're very quick to get moving upfield, like you said, John. But I tell you what, I'd love to see Clyde start to gamble on some of those out passes. They need to change the the, right. the the way this game's going right now, and a big turnover would be huge. Absolutely. Aiden Pratt back to throw. He's looking, looking right. He's got a low, high, lot pass out. It's going to be incomplete. And he was going for out here at number three. Connor Pratt. Yeah, Brady Wilson on that coverage. And Wilson's lucky because Wilson did not look back at the ball. If they were going to throw a flag, potentially they could have thrown one there, Mike. Yeah, that, that was one where he just kind of put his hands up in the air. And there's no face guarding in high school no. football. But, uh, you know, if you have your hands on him and you're not looking for the ball. Aiden Pratt at 6'4", going to Connor Pratt at 6'3". Here we go, third and long. Man in motion. Here we go. Pratt running this way. He's being flushed out of the pocket, and he's going to be caught. And it'll be a first down. And how he got rid of that ball, i, I got to be honest, guys. Just the best way I can say it is he throws the ball like Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. yeah right? and, and he has the skill as far as being able to run the ball because the, the defensive line is coming up. The linebackers are starting to come up. 
Right. They he gets to. rid of it. He draws him on. Then here comes Jackson with a handoff. He cuts back up the middle. He keeps his feet moving and gets down to the 11. It'll be second down and about six, seven from the 11. He runs the ball. He draws the defense. And then he always has a receiver somewhere close on the sideline, Mike. And that time he just kind of threw the sidearm pass and something like you would see on Sundays. Yeah, and he's so accurate when he's throwing it on the run right. like that. Being chased. He was being chased by Blue Norman. Blue Norman has... 16 sacks on the year right now. It has none tonight. Aiden Pratt, the quarterback, he's going to give to Jackson. He's going to keep it himself. This time he gets hit and thrown for a loss. I believe that's Overmeyer on the tackle, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's big, right. big 53. Oh, 53, okay. That was Logan, Logan Homer. Well, Logan Homer came through. Yep, the tackle for loss. The, the most impo- uh, impressive part, too, for Van Word is he didn't start last year when they no. won the championship. So it's, no. I'd like to know who that quarterback was last year. <laughs> right. Well, he's got a ring, whoever it is. Third down and 11. Jackson in motion. Clyde moving with him. Back to throw. Pratt fucking flush out of the pocket. He's going to throw him down here. It's in, almost intercepted. That's probably the worst pass he's through tonight. He tried to go up underneath to Crutchfield and good coverage on the backside by the Flyers. Yeah, A. Morrison right there had both hands on it, kind of went through his hands. So, fourth down, excuse me, Mike, fourth down and 10 at the 15. Morrison has showed up here in the second half. Yes, he has. I mean, he had uh, quite a few tackles the first half, and, you know, that, that was great coverage right there. Three receivers of the far side. Houdini at quarterback. I mean, Aiden Pratt at quarterback. Here he comes, man in motion to the right. He's stepping, looking into the end zone. He's got to throw it up here. It's going to be incomplete. So the Clive Flyers get a defensive stop. It's 21 to nothing with 6-10 to go in the third quarter, but they turn it over on downs, and that's the second time tonight the Flyers have kept them from getting a first down and turn it over in downs. Let's see if their offense can change the complexion of this game. They'll get the ball, start at the 15-yard line. Yeah, nice job by Will Lozier out there getting his hands up. And uh, that would have been a great one-hand catch. I tell you, the receiver, he high-pointed it. He did. He only had one hand on it, though. If he had brought that down. If Lozier had not had good position, that could very well have been a touchdown. Clyde is definitely melting in in a heavy mode here. Going, they're looking deep. It's going to be a pass down here. It's going to be in and out of the hands, just a little bit too long for the intended receiver. He was open, Wilson, but could not get it to him. Just a, not enough air on the ball, Mike. Second down and 10 at the 15. Yeah, Luke Wessel had the coverage on that. He was running pretty much stride for stride. Wilson was pulling away just as the ball was coming, but yep. it was just a little too flat. And, of course, he's got the wind at his back, I believe, so maybe that gave him a little extra lift there. Second down and 10. Clyde having to hurry. Here we go. Cook again. Cook throws it out here. It's going to be caught along the sideline and getting dropped right at the line of scrimmage. Boy, I think that that looked to me like Nate Jackson was on the coverage back there. That was unbelievable defense. Yeah, he did a nice job of just coming up and just keeping his shoulders right square to the line of scrimmage. Wrapping up with both hands and nowhere to go. They gave him two yards on it. So the ball spotted at the seven at the seventeen. And right now, Clive Flyers trying to find a way to get in the end zone here tonight. They have not been held scoreless all year. There's a fake. Cook looking, looking, looking. He's gonna throw it deep again. And this time it's gonna be oh, there's gonna be no not a oh, oh, no. Oh. Okay, come on. Wow, now. that should have been a flag. Yeah, that. Now, if they call that incidental, Coach Carter is living. You know what? He has a right. That, yeah. that you know, we, uh, they're going to throw a penalty against Coach Carter for complaining. And he's right in that official's face right there, too. And he has every right to because as they went for the ball, the defender grabbed the Clyde receiver's hand blatantly. And uh, and Coach Carter, uh, I have to admit, he does have a reason to be upset. Yeah. Yeah, that could have been a big play, big first down, because it's not an automatic first down, but they only needed eight to get the first down. 15 yards, that would have been, you know, enough. To- Fourth down, they're going to have to punt the football. Boy, Coach Carter is livid. Yeah, That's a terrible call. Absolutely terrible. A terrible non-call. Yeah, terrible non-call. Absolutely. 
Coach Mark, of course, Mark Roche would say that. Um, yeah, it was that was a bad call, no doubt about yeah. it. I think the ref just heard me when he walked by. Too. <laughs> well, <laughs> I kind of okay. said that a little louder. <laughs> What's up, he's, gonna he's not going to throw you out, Brad. We'll come down and take care of that. He's had the ball spotted back at the nine yard line for the penalty that Coach Carter got, and a ten yard unsportsmanlike, probably. So five eighteen to go here in the third quarter, and Clyde did not able to get that. There's a snap, and let's see. It's going to be Cook with a decent punt. It's going to hit, but, boy, it's going to give a good bounce back to Van Wert, and Van Wert's going to get it first and 10 at the Clyde 37. Just a rough turn of events right there. I mean, that was one that, uh, you know, the receiver goes down, gets tripped, goes down to the ground, and I'm sure that official, he's going to say that was incidental contact. He got twisted up. He didn't do it on purpose. Well, I saw the hand. I saw a grab of the hand, and, and that's why they did trip. Well, we lost Brad Bannister on the right on the sideline, so hopefully we'll get him back. All right, so first and 10, Aiden Pratt's going to do the shovel pass in the beginning. There it goes down to the 35, pick up a two to the 35. So, Brad, going back to that play, um, that was as close to a no-brainer in that call, and that's why Coach Carter was so animated in the situation. Yeah, he doesn't get too worked up. No, you know, every no. coach gets a little fired up at times about calls, but you never see him get that animated. But And he, like you said uh, and Mike said, he, he has absolutely every right to be upset about that call. I mean, he's fighting for his team, and, and I think it was clearly a pass interference. So Van Wert with the ball again, and here they go. Jackson hit up in the middle. Jackson dropped for a loss. Back to the original line of scrimmage of the 37. You know, when you have games like this, guys, and of course we've got, what, 16 minutes of football left, it's awful hard to come back after being down by 21. We've seen things change, so we're not going to call that. But you always have moments that are difference makers. Yeah, yeah You know, absolutely. difference makers that help you get the momentum to push across. And Clyde's had a few of those tonight that have not gone their way. Here comes Pratt. He's going to hang out on the football and keep running. And he'll pick up some pretty good yardage, but when I get the first down, they're going to throw him down at the 29, pick up of eight. Well, I tell you what, uh, Pratt and Dylan Overmeyer are going to know each other's face before the night's over, isn't it? They've been matching up quite a few times tonight. So they're going to say it's fourth down and two again for the Van Wert Cougars. 21 to nothing here on 92 won the Wolf. 337 and counting. Need to get a quarter timeout break. Rolling left is Pratt. He's looking in the end zone. He's going to throw it wide open here. It's going to be incomplete. Now they're going to throw a flat oh. against Clyde. And so now, oh. now, yeah. now you get a little bit. That referee yeah. said, hey. That's the same back judge yeah. that, hey, that you know, did not throw the flag yeah, going the other way. You yeah. called me out before. Well, I'm calling it out back. They're going to call pass interference on the Flyers. Uh, yeah, we got a lot of Clyde fans right now that uh, – Want to know what that official's name is, but you know, it's not it's not something that he's going to want to uh, go to Clyde. Well, I, I, I have to say, you know, that particular play, I probably would have called it. Too. Yeah, that sure. I probably would have called it too, but the difference is, is that he did not call the one before, <laughs> and so that penalty is going to give them first and ten at the fifteen. Three twenty-three to go, twenty-one to nothing. And of course, when your team's Getting beat by three scores, it's easy to verbalize your displeasure. And so that's, you know, it is what it is. So the fans are going to be fired up, and people are going to probably not be as cold as they would have been if they just sat there nicely. But <laughs> the fact of the matter is that it's still 21 to nothing, Van Word on top. And it's going to be a delayed draw by the quarterback. He's going to spin and twist, and they're going to spot him down just inside the 10. We'll call it pick up a tripped five up yeah, just down to the up, nine. Got tripped up there by Dylan Overmeyer. And again, if Dylan Overmeyer is not there, he was probably going to be in the end zone. So the Van Wert Cougars won it all last year. Clyde Flyers won it all the year before. Three minutes to go in the third quarter. No score in this second half so far, but Van Wert is now threatening. Pratt back, looking, looking, looking. He's thrown up in the corner of the end zone. It's going to be caught, and it will be a touchdown. And let's see who got that. I believe we went to Crutchfield again. Yeah, nice. That was just a nice pass. He threw it low it enough. Beautiful. Yeah. The only Crutchfield was able to get to it. I mean, it was defended fairly well. But, uh, you know, he threw it right across the goal line, about six inches off the ground. 
Crunchfield was able to go down, get his hands underneath it, make a good catch. Well, he saw him flood the zone, and he just did a little out, and the ball was right there for him. Here's the extra point. That kick is up, and the kick is good. So our score right now with 2.49 to go in the third, all man work. The Cougars, 28, Clyde nothing. We'll be back after this on 92-1, the Wolves. No bones about it. We have the meats. One bite, and you're going to love Arby's Boneless Wings. It's six or nine pieces of tender all-white meat chicken in a crispy breading, sauced and tossed in hot honey sauce. Choose your favorite side to round out your meal. Then satisfy your sweet tooth with Arby's Caramel Cinnamon Shake. It's a creamy caramel cinnamon experience topped with whipped cream and a sprinkle of cinnamon. Stop in today. Arby's in Fremont, Port Clinton, Clyde, and Huron. Planning ahead just makes sense. Let Hannah and Chodzinski Keller Funeral Home help give you peace of mind. They understand and want you to know that by making arrangements in advance, they can help you create a celebration of a lifetime and spare your family unnecessary stress. Get started today with a free booklet filled with funeral planning information and ideas. Call or visit them at HannahmanFH.com. Hannah and Chodzinski Keller Funeral Home. They've expanded their family to better serve yours. Fremont Federal Credit Union High School Football. 92-1 the Wolf. 92-1 the Wolf. W-O-H-F. All right, back to action. The Van Wert kick off the Clyde Field at the 20. Returned up to about the 28. And it'll be first and 10 Clyde at their own 28-yard line. Down 28 to nothing. So uh, this ball game is now a challenge. The clock is not the friend of the Clyde Flyers. They've not been able to score quickly at all tonight, Mike. So you know in this situation that right now this ball game is going to be Van Wertz just to kind of ma- massage the clock, kind of keep their hands on the wheels, and they could walk out of here with the win to take on the winner of Port Clinton. And Perkins will try to get an updated score on that. Right now, Clyde playing for a little dignity right now and seeing what they can do. Flare pass out to Olsen. Olsen turns the corner, puts his head down, and he just gets run out of bounds. And he doesn't pick up a yard. No, nice job by uh, Van Wert secondary. Like they've been playing all night, John. Yeah. You know, they've been coming up and they, the receivers are stalk blocking, but they're not pushing them down the field. The defensive backs are pushing them back into the backfield. So there's no gain. Man in motion is Olsen. Left to right. Three receivers to the far side. Jaden Cook quarterback. He's rolling back. He's stopping. And he's looking. He's in trouble. And he loses the football, and he picks it back up somehow, keeps his feet moving, runs down the sideline, and actually gets some positive yardage to the 31. How he did that, I have no idea. He must be living right because that ball fell out of his hands. He picked it up on the run and gained three yards. I will tell you, if you look at the defensive backfield for uh, Van Wert, they've got Crutchfield, Gunter, Lodick, Parker, all their wide receivers are playing defensive backfield, and that's why they're all quick and they're all long and they just cover exceptionally well. I tell you, the conditioning these guys have going both ways yes, is outstanding. So another third and long with 2.30. I mean, it's only 19 seconds since Clyde got the ball. Cook going long, throwing it up here, and it's going to be caught or not. And the Clyde Flyers are going to have their first big-time catch here tonight as, as Cook throws it all the way down to the – Almost a 20-yard line. Who caught that ball, if you could? Brad Bannister. That looked like Brady Wilson. Yeah, it was Brady Wilson. And he was covered by two defenders, and Brady went up over top of them and took it away and came down with it. About 40-yard pass play. And right there, Cook was was pressured hard by Turner Witten. Second down. And had to kind of get rid of it before, uh, before he wanted to. But uh, Witten had a beat on him, and and uh, Cook did a nice job of eluding the sack and just getting rid of the ball. We just missed a play, and they called it second down. Oh, we got it. All right. Quick update: not nothing has changed in the Port Clinton Perkins game. Still 13 to seven, Port Clinton in the third quarter. Thank you. Back to throw. Cross the middle, caught and dropped. But it looks like it's a first down. Brad Bannister. Yep, they're signaling first down. Nice catch by uh, Griffin Noss because he took a little hit there at the end. Yeah, Braylon Parker came up and just hit him chest to chest. So Clyde quickly with the ball, they try to hand it off and tripped up maybe a few down to the 10. 
Damon, a couple of three. Yeah, Damon McCracken came up and made that stop. Second down in the red zone. Second down, and we'll say seven at the nine. Can't get a first down down there. High snap. They're going to throw it out here. It's going to be caught. And, boy, I tell you what, no stuttering out there. They hold them for no gain. They, they're they reading that flare pass now, Mike, pretty frequently, and that one for no gain. Yeah, as soon as Jaden Cook turns his shoulders, they go. They, you've got the safety and the outside linebacker to the corner. And uh, the safety to this side are getting soft blocked, but the other safety and an outside linebacker making the play. Four receivers of the speed receivers of the far side, Jaden Cook, big third down play. He's looking in the end zone. It's going to be caught, and it could very well be close to first down. Let's go down to Brad Bannister. Brad, is it fourth down for them? Yep, it'll be fourth down just inside. Gosh, what are they looking at? They're looking about two, three yards here. So is the ball spotted at the five or is it spotted at the four? They need to get to the two, so uh, right. fourth and two. All right, so they're going to bring in the jumbo package. See a dose of Michael Daniels here. 101 to go here in the third quarter. Clyde with their first opportunity to score, but it is fourth down. And they have been stopped twice inside the red zone on fourth down today. This could be the third time. Let's see if the Flyers keep it. They give it to Daniels. Daniels puts his head down, and Daniels gets in the end zone. He scores. So the Flyers do crack the end zone here for the first time tonight. Daniels with a four-yard run, and Clyde on the board here with 57 seconds to go in the third quarter of play. Yeah, I can see uh, Van Wert um, coming out and, you know, trying to eat up as much as the clock, but they're not going to get out of their game plan. They're still going to put the ball in the air, and they're still going to put it in Brad's hands just like it's been all night. Here's the extra point attempt. I tell you what, he's been pretty quiet. McCoy Dickman. Snap, hold, kick, kick is up, and kick is going to be good. So your score here now is Van Wert 28, Clyde 7. Van Wert will get the ball here with just under a minute to go. So Brad Bannister, you know, it's awful hard when you get to this level in the tournament, especially with the number two and three seed, to shut somebody out. And I think the Clyde Flyers just showed that their persistency helped them get on the board down now 28 to 7. Well, you never want to say never. So, uh, Correct. You know, Clyde keeps staying at it. They, uh, you know, uh, keep working hard. And that's what they do. They're all about grit, you know, kind of blue collar community that works hard. And they're, these kids play that way. So, they're not, they're not going to quit just yet. Well, you know, it would be nice to have the fortune of the right call at the right time. Or <laughs> That's helpful, yeah. Or, 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 you know, the interception down near the end zone. Yeah. Those little things turn around. This game turns around. It doesn't mean that there can't be an interception and some momentum swing. If Clyde can go ahead and score again before Van Wert would have a chance, come within two scores, anything can happen because these are high school kids, right? And and you can see momentum change. But either way, there's an onside kick. They kick it up, and it's going to be caught and returned, and they'll get it at the 47-yard line. Remember, you know, Van Wert's closest game, guys, this year for them was their game against Otto Glander for finish at 9-3, and three, Division 5, and they only beat them by 5. Everything else has been 20-point wins for them. Who, who beat them? They lost one game. You know, do, you know, do you have that up there, John? Um, yeah, I can tell you right now. St. Yeah. Mary's, was it? St. Memorial? Mary's Memorial, yeah. 21-14. to 14. Right, they're going to go ahead, and it's going to be Pratt. Hand the ball. Boy, Pratt just runs. And he goes again and gets another first down, down to the 42. Just does not stop. You know, he just does such a nice job of just finding, just hesitating a little bit, finding the hole, and just going straight up field. No juking, no dancing. 40 seconds to go here in the third. Of course, Van Wert would like to answer this score here. There's a snap. Quarterback keep again. This time he gets hit the line of scrimmage and he goes nowhere. So that time the Clyde defense was able to seal that seam a little bit. And that should be the last play of the third quarter. So we've got one more quarter in the books. It's 28 to 7. Van Wert in control here tonight in Napoleon. Stay tuned for the fourth quarter of action. You're listening to Fremont Federal Credit Union playoff action here on 92 on the Wolf, part of the BAS Sports Network. 
Your home for fun, food, sports, and spirits is also the home for value. Frickers! Frickers Everyday Values begin on Monday with boneless frickin' chicken wings. Tuesday offers traditional frickin' chicken wings. On Wednesday, enjoy a steak dinner. And on Thursday, frickin' chicken chunks. Kids eat free every day. And your favorite events are on TVs everywhere. The home for everyday values is the home for fun, food, sports, and spirits. Frick, frick, frickers! Miller Super Value and Clyde is the place to shop for great savings on groceries. Each week, hundreds of items are discounted to help you save even more. Check out their expanded meat department. For a great supper, shop Miller's extensive deli for fried chicken, wings, great salads, and side dishes. Take and Big Pizza and Fresh Daily Sushi are now available. Miller Super Value, your hometown grocery, is proud of our Clyde Flyers. Go Flyers! Fremont Federal Credit Union High School Football. 92 on the Wolf. 92 on the Wolf. WOHF. Back to action. Moving right to left. It's going to be Fred again. He's got the ball, and there he goes. Fred at the 20, 10, 5. He waltzes in the end zone with a touchdown. He's called his number all night long, and he just ran it up, and he has now put a spot on the Flyers up 34 to 7. 42 yard run. And again, you know, just going up and just hesitating a little bit, going up into the line, finding a spot, and just going straight up field. Didn't take long. Oh. And now the Clyde Faithful are faithfully getting their blankets and starting to find their way into the exits with 11.51 to go here today. Extra point is high snap, and the kick is no good. No good. So they blinked. They blinked here tonight. They missed an extra point, Mike. <laughs> All right, so we'll take a timeout. 11.51 to go in the ballgame, 34-7. to 7. Van Wert will be back after this. Hi, I'm Nick Cray, CEO of Fremont Federal Credit Union. We are proud to sponsor high school sports on Eagle 99, 92-1 The Wolf, and 100.9 Coast Country. Investing our communities and our youth are what we're all about. Whether it's for the community we live in or guiding people with the biggest financial decisions of their lives, we believe in people helping people. Investing in our communities and our youth is what we're all about. Visit us today at FremontFCU.com. Membership eligibility required, federally insured by the NCUA. Crown Battery, locally owned and operated, is pleased to support tonight's teams and takes this time to wish them luck for a successful season. The staff at Crown Battery recognizes the importance of teamwork both in and out of the classroom. That is why everyone at Crown Battery is a proud sponsor of not only tonight's broadcast, but a proud sponsor and contributor to our community, its athletic programs, and its educational infrastructure. Good luck and thank you from all the staff at Crown Battery, supplying new power since 1926. Fremont Federal Credit Union High School Football. 92 on the Wolf. 92 on the Wolf. W-O-H-F. Right back to action with the ensuing kickoff. Clyde gets it at about the 25. They return it up near the 40. It'll be at the 38-yard line. And they will have the ball first and 10. Down 34 to 7. 11.46 to go. So, Mike, right now we know. Van Wert in the driver's seat, right? And kids are going to be playing their last high school football game. This is when you're making memories that you will never, ever forget, correct? Yeah, that's one thing that, you know, this Clyde Flyers, they will not give up. They're going to go to the final second. High snap, pump fake. Cook looking, flushed out of the pocket. He's going to go ahead and throw it along the sidelines and throw it away. Pretty smart option there. Yeah, he was getting chased down by Caden Bates, who's all over him. If he wouldn't have gotten rid of it, that would have been probably about a 20-yard sack. But he so did we nice have job. not seen – well, I was going to say, we haven't really seen a weak spot by Van Wert in this ball game. But, Mike, we've not seen their run defense for real long because they nope. got up early and Clyde was forced to throw the football. Yep. So we're not 100% sure how good their run defense is over the span of a whole game. But we know that there's balance as team as we've seen so far this year. Cook back to throw a little possession pass to Wilson, and Wilson takes his eyes off it and drops it. And that's just not a Brady Wilson type of play, but at this point in the ball game, mentally just can't hang on to it, makes a third down and 10. Yeah, you know, it's, you know Cook, he's putting it right there. And like you say, John, that's there's been fun. some drops tonight. Yeah, that's for sure. We've seen Brady make some outstanding, unbelievable catches, and that's just one that I'm sure he wishes he could add back. Third down and 10. Well, uh, 
And that's going to be a pass that's thrown up high, unable to haul it in and cook through a laser. But it'll be third and ten. So how big was that drop, Mike? No, yeah, that would have been down and ten. Yeah, that would have probably been uh, about two three. yards short. Right. So far, he's going to go for it at this point in the ball game. Clock stops. Cook back to throw. He's going to go ahead and throw along again. It's up in the air. And boy, they've been hanging on to him again. This ball's caught on the bump. Oh, that's unbelievable. It was it was tipped up and caught by the second Clyde receiver. It might have been Griffin Nuffs. Let's go down to Brad. Yeah, that was exactly it. The ball went up to Andrew Cobble. Him and his defender went up, got batted right into Griffin Nuffs' hands, who then advanced it another five to ten yards. Now that... As I said before, as a senior, that's a play you'll never forget. Jane Cook throws it out here. It's going to be caught. Good defense by Van Wert. Again, that is Connor Pratt coming up. But Wilson gets the pass, and they spot it. Uh, they give him first down. Well, they did not have the no, not set. Yeah, they did. That's they, right, Mike. They, I don't think they had the ball ready for play, actually. Yeah, that's what they were doing. They were checking. It will be a yard short. So that pass takes it to the six, and a handoff by Daniels in the end zone for a score. So Daniels gets his second score of the night. Wow, what a play that, uh, you know, Garrett Gunter hits the ball, deflects the ball right into Griffin Knopf's hands. I mean, the defense was there, but that was amazing. Tied for the extra point. So as you said, the Flyers are going to fight to the end, and that time is this heads-up play by Griffin Nuff. Flops right in his hands, and he advances it up, and Clyde comes back and scores right away. That's a point by McCoy. Dickman is up, and it's good. So we'll keep it right here. You're scoring now 34-14. to 14. So the Flyers down by 20. Push your goal, Mike, in a game like this. Playoffs. No running clock against you. No. And the Flyers are probably in a position where they might have eliminated that opportunity. You know, the score could pull within some, but uh, they tried an onside kick last time, Mike. Are they going to try it again? Why not? What do you got to lose? Well, you know, you know it's just one of those things that, you know, 34 14, only 10 57 left in the game. You got to make something happen. You do. And you're kicking into the wind anyway, so right, you're, you're, right. like you're going to get a lot of yardage out of this. Good call, Brad. 34 to 14. Clyde with two touchdowns here in this second half. 21 to nothing halftime lead by Van Wertz. What made this game the situation that we are right now? Teams have played even up, Mike, really here in the second half of play. So obviously they're looking to onside kick it. It's bouncing up, and it's kind of there. It's going to loose on the ground, and it's picked up. And it'll be at the 39. Van Wert will get it at the 39-yard line. Yeah, that was not one of the better onside kicks. Yeah, it was a little bit of a – It was a, too long and too straight. I mean, you got to get more towards the sideline. And Mike, that kind of looked like when you would take a four-iron and try to hit down underneath a tree and just keep one low and get it back out in the fairway. It's kind of what it looked like. And, and it probably goes about that distance. Yeah, maybe. about that distance, maybe. 15 yards. 15 man. yards, yeah. yeah. Set you up for a pitch and wedge in. Yeah. Golf season's over, isn't it? That is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> okay, here we go. Van Wert with the lead, 34-14, 10-55 to go in this one. Of course, you can tell we've had a nice long season, too. So, Pratt back to throw. Quickly, throws across the middle, incomplete, almost intercepted. That's the first errant pass that we've seen from Aiden Pratt all day. It is, and that was covered up pretty well. Dylan Overmeyer was out there, and uh, Will Lozier as well. So... You know, that, that's one that, uh, I'll tell you what, Clyde picked that off and go back to the end zone. It's a game again. 10-51, Van Wert with the lead. Pratt looking over the defense. Clyde moving with it. They fake it. He takes off again. This time he gets hit and dropped for no gain. So is, uh, is Van Wert playing the low prevent right now, Mike? Yeah, I think. Maybe a feel of it. Let's go down to Brad and get his opinion, Brad. 
Are they uh, just kind of taking it easy? Yeah. Right? Yeah. They, yeah. I, you know, <laughs> the last thing you want to be doing is uh, turning the ball over right now. So just be conservative. Don't take right. a lot of risks. You know, if the pass is there and it's an easy pass, make it. But sure. don't force anything. Absolutely. Third down and 10 at the 39. Comes a man in motion. Generally, they throw to the motion man. Pratt looking, looking. He's going to throw it out here. It's going to be incomplete. That time he tried to do it with his brother. How many times do you think those two have thrown the ball? Mike, how many times did your boys throw the ball back and forth to each other? Un unnumberable. I, just, I mean, you can't count it, right? No. <laughs> and uh, Clyde forces them to uh, three and out. They're going to have to punt the football. Flyers will get it back. Flyers with a chance to, with another score to make this respectable here, Mike, yeah. at 34 to 21, should they get a score on the board. Let's see what's going to happen. 34-14, 10-06 left in this one. Of course, you're looking for no mistakes. And they put a rush on. It's a low punt. It's going to hit and bounce, and it will be down at the 25-yard line. First and 10, Clyde at the 25. So, yeah, 75 yards to go, 9.55 in the ball game. Uh, Brad Bannister, big kudos for you for weathering that weather. We haven't had any of the really bad driving rains or snow or sleet this year, but the cold has come upon us in this ball game. Oh, yeah, it's been a great football season weather-wise. You know, we started a week early and just seemed like every Friday – Ended up being really, really nice, but this one was a little different, obviously. All right, we'll see what Clyde's going to do here. Obviously, they're going to have to put the ball in the air, and uh, that work knows it. They get to Wilson. They try to rip the ball from Wilson. So that time, Connor Pratt just tried to rip it instead of tackle him, and Wilson's going to catch the ball. And it's going to be an eight-yard pickup up to about the 33. So Clyde's just going to methodically do some, uh, Mike, some possession passing and see if they can split one down the middle of the scene. No, they still have three timeouts. Sure. The well, clock, though, move, uh, well, it's moving now at 925. Here comes Cobble in motion to the left. Cook back to throw. He's looking that way. He's looking down the middle of the field. He's going deep again, and this time he throws it way past anybody, and it looked like the receiver got hung up amongst the two defenders, and that will go incomplete. Make it third down, and we'll call two. Yeah, he was hoping that Brady Wilson could uh, get past that secondary and outrun everybody, but uh, that arm is a little bit too much for Brady to get under. And that's into the wind, right? Yeah. So they got pick up two to get the first down. Let's see if they just possession pass this one the next play. They're coming back, and they're looking that way, and it's going to be caught. And it will be, they're going to say incomplete, right in front of you, Brad Bannister. Yep, came right into Brady Wilson's gut and just rolled right out onto the carpet. Well, that's something, you know, too, that we've seen uh, tonight that we have not seen all season. Fourth down and two, the Flyers obviously will go for it. 9.09 to go in the ballgame, 34-14, Van Wert Cougars. And here comes Daniels. Daniels puts his head down and he powers forward. And well, I, don't I don't think he got that, Brad Bannister. Nope, they're pointing the other direction. It's going to be a Van Wert uh, first down on change of possession. Of course, you kind of knew that Daniels was going to get the ball right. Yeah, Cullen Dunn was right there. As soon as Daniels got to the line of scrimmage, Cullen Dunn stood him up, and then the rest of the Van Wert defense just kind of piled on and gave him no yards. 9.04, 34-14, Van Wert now takes it over and downs in the Clyde 34. So, the Flyers unable to convert. Drop passes and good game tackling has made the difference. Here comes Jackson. He bounces to the outside. He'll get hit. He'll pick up a few, and he'll get down to the Clyde 32. Pick up two on that carry. Moving right to left are the Cougars. 8.51 now, Mike, they're just kind of going to run that clock and let that play clock run down. Oh, yeah, just, you know, Clyde. You know, Take their time. Yep, absolutely. Of course, that's, if I was on the other side of the coin, I'd do the same thing, right? <laughs> just kind of, you know, slowly turn the tap on and let the water just kind of trickle <laughs> out, right? And that's when you feel the game slowly just kind of slipping away. The air is going out of the Yeah, balloon. absolutely. All right, so it's going to be second down, and we'll say eight. Aiden Pratt, well, we're going to see his name. There's going to be a timeout, Van Wert. We'll take a timeout here. 
8.15 to go in this one. We'll be back after this on 92-1, The Wolf. I loved playing high school sports. I loved the competition, the camaraderie, the bands, the crowds, all the pageantry, and I wanted to keep playing. But I graduated. No colleges called, and neither did the pros. So, to stay close to the game I loved, I decided to become a high school official. You know, a referee. When I played high school sports, I learned the importance of integrity, good sportsmanship, and respect for the rules. Now, as a high school official, I get to help model these same values to others. Maybe the colleges and the pros didn't call, but the kids in Ohio did. And now, I'm enjoying the competition, the camaraderie, the bands, the crowds, and all the pageantry of high school sports all over again. Interested in becoming a licensed high school official? Go to highschoolofficials.com to learn more and begin the application process. Fremont Federal Credit Union High School Football. 92-1 the Wolf. 92-1 the Wolf. W-O-H-F. And back to action. Aiden Pratt, the quarterback for Van Wert, runs off right tackle, picks up maybe two. It's going to be third down, and we'll say a long six. Just under eight minutes to go here, 755. We'll go back to the station at some point in time, at least ask them if they can pick up the score on the Clinton Perkins game. Should be getting close to the same point in the ball game right now. But it was Port Clinton hanging on to the lead against the Perkins Pirates. Check that. Perkins 14, Port Clinton 13 oh, wow. in the fourth quarter. There's a pass into the end zone, incomplete. So, in the, did you say third quarter, Brad? No, fourth quarter. Fourth quarter. So the Pirates trying to find their way into the regional final. Boy, what a feather in a cap that would be for Jalen Santoro, his second year as head coach at Perkins. You know, the way they play Clyde in uh, the regular season, uh, they deserve to be where they're at. Fourth down and six. Seven and a half to go. Pratt all alone. He's looking to throw. He's looking left. Now he's going to flush right. He's going to flush, and he's going to throw it in the end zone. No, he's going to throw it down to the one-yard line. Boy, I don't know what the defender was doing at that point in time, Brad Bannister, but he's just kind of not making a play on the ball. Yeah, when the receiver made his cut to the outside, he kind of got his feet tripped up, and okay. that's what made him uh, so wide open. And again, just a great pass along that sideline. Just that, you know, as he was falling out of bounds, he just could be able to get his feet in. Well, Pratt was going to prefer to throw the ball before a run it, but he could have ran it. Mike. He could have ran for the first. So they're threatening to score again. 7.21 to go. And hand off to Jackson. Jackson's going to get stopped for no gain. Actually, he's going to have a loss, I believe. Where'd they spot the ball, Brad? He lost one yard. They're going to move it back to the three. To yeah. the three-yard line, 708 and counting. Walker Britt, Blue Norman on that stop. Name that we've called a combination quite a few times this year. What a career those two have had. Playing oh, together absolutely. with Dylan Overmeyer on the defensive side yep. for the Flyers. The cornerstones of that defense. They're going to have a lot to replace next year. 647. They're going to pitch it out to Jackson. He's going to get hit and stop. He will not get in the end zone, does he or not? No, he does. He gets to the pylon and scores. So Jackson gets the score here. It's a three-yard run. At the 640 mark here of the fourth quarter play. Yeah, it looked like they were going to be able to force him out of bounds, but he... Got the ball across the goal line over the pylon. Get that score. So the Van Wert Cougars have opened it up. And they will win this one here tonight as they go for the extra point. And they put on an offensive show here tonight against a very solid Clyde defense. And that extra point is good. 41 to 14. The score here. Up by 27. And a solid performance here tonight by the Van Wert Cougars. You know, Clyde had a couple opportunities in the first half. You know, maybe 28 points on the board, but they still be down by a few scores. That's how good this Van Wert team is. Yeah, and this is the first time all year that Clyde has 40 put on them. The other time was Colombian. Um, Clyde won 42 to 39, and then the double overtime. Shelby put 35 on him, but uh, 
has been one of the most prolific offenses that Clyde has seen. Yeah, I would say that the the balance that you talked about, Mike, this is this is good football team. This is a team that could win it all. They could again. It's so hard to repeat, but this team has got what it needs. My only concern for them is they have a lot of these skill players are playing both ways, yeah. and that could be a problem. But you know what? If you're scoring and you're winning, that energy kind of keeps you through the game. You know what I mean? It's it's just human nature. All right. There's a handoff, kickoff, picked up. Clyde will get the ball. And we are going to really going to spot it, folks. Right about the 35-yard line. So six and a half to go. 41 to 14. All Van Wert. The Cougars are going to advance to the regional final right now. The Port Clinton Redskins. We thought it would be a tight one against Perkins. Port Clinton Redskins trying to find a way to upset or beat Perkins. Perkins with a one-point lead late in the ballgame. Jaden Cook back. He's looking, looking. He's going to be flushed out of the pocket, and he's going to stop and run, and Cook puts his head down, spins and turns, and and right now Coach Fretz is looking at him saying, please don't run any more than you have to. I need you on the basketball floor here in a couple weeks. Quick update. Port Clinton, 19. Perkins, 14. So they uh, scored. So 19-14 Port Clinton right now. We don't know how much time's left in the game, do we? No, no idea. 6-10 to go in this one. So Port Clinton up 19-14. Cook back to throw. He picked up five. He's going deep again, and it's out there, and it is going to be incomplete. And he literally, that receiver got tackled. <laughs> Jackson tackled him as they are going up for the ball. And he's just walking off the side like, here's the ball, ref, take it. Yeah, that was Griffin Dahl. And <laughs> the ball was over his head, and the defensive back, he, he, just, just, he just grabbed him, threw him on the ground. He just drilled him. He did. And right now, Griffin Dahl is sitting there going, <clears throat> didn't like that, that one hurt. That one hurt. Third down and five, 5.58 to go here in this one. It's been a great year for the Clyde Flyers with their season that come to an end here as a tip ball goes up above too high, and it will be incomplete. They'll make it fourth down and five at the 40. Just a little high in that pass by Cook. Yeah, well, and when it gets tipped to the line of scrimmage, you know, that was still almost made a play on the ball out there, but uh... – so as uh, some of the fans are kind of packing themselves up and finding the way, there are still a lot of Clyde faithful here, especially the student body. See if the Flyers can find themselves down in the end zone one more time. 5.54 to go in this one. Jaden Cook looking at fourth and five. Lozier in motion. Cook is rolling this way. He's looking out here through a bullet. And uh, in and out of the hands of the attendant receiver. I tell you what, I don't know that I've seen Jaden Cook throw the ball any harder <laughs> no. than he has tonight. Yeah, that, that was a, uh, a frozen rope right there to Olsen and kind of went right through his hands. First and 10, Van Wert, 41 to 14 in command, 550 to go. And their quarterback coming in. This would be a nice point in the ball game to get your second unit some playing time in the playoffs, Mike, but they bring the first unit back out. Brad Bannister would make that substitution at this point. In the I'm game. not sure. Oh, would. let's sub him out. That's what I would be doing. Yeah, absolutely. Get the kids some playing time. But this quarterback's coming back next year, so they don't have to worry about it. They're going to hand the ball off here, and they do give it. This time they're bringing a new running back, and that's Brylon Parker. Parker is a quarterback defensive back. Well, he's a running back he's now. running back tonight. And he got down to the 38, so he'll pick up two. Abe Morrison with the tackle for Clyde. Just uh, milking the clock and trying to get out of here with uh, no injuries and play for next week. Boy, what a thriller at Sandusky between Port Clinton and Perkins. We knew that game was going to be very tight. Here they're going to jet sweep it, and this time it's going to be the quarterback just keeping it himself, and he'll get thrown for a loss back to the 39 and make it third down and nine. I wouldn't be running my quarterback. No, I, I'm not saying that right now. You know, with the, not, uh, not up by 27. No. You know, that's that's uh, 
that's something that, okay, you know, he's good. Everybody's good. Everybody's healthy. Now yeah, let's, uh, let's let the play another day. It's yeah, going to be next week because next week you're playing for a championship. Yep. All right, here we go with the ball. There's a breakaway run down the left side and getting into the end zone with the score on the back side is going to be Parker. Braylon Parker with the score. Yep, Braylon Parker, the uh, listed quarterback, turned into running back tonight, found the outside crease and was able to get it up to field and, and uh, just barely got it in across over the pylon to get that score. So they have blown this one open. Putting an exclamation point on this one, Mike Martin. The Clyde defense has just been on the field too long tonight. Going into oh, yeah. the extra point. There's a snap. There's a kick. The kick is up and the kick is good. So your score now is going to be Van Wert 48 and Clyde 14. So that puts it running clock. And, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, this 420 is going to go awful fast. So before we finish up our broadcast, we do want to say a couple mentions so we just don't want to forget. We want to thank the BAS Sports Department, head by Kyle Knight and his crew, and the folks back at administration for being able to put things together to put us on the road every week to bring you high school football. We're very thankful for that and all that they do and our, all of our partners. Our chief engineer, Mike Rook, has done a spectacular job. And, of course, April Gottron filled in for him a couple times and spilled a little bit, joined the broadcast team for a week or two. So we're thankful for her and what she does um, to help you know, make it possible for us to bring these games. I want to give a special shout out to a blue collar bistro for being our sponsors in the uh, press box and uh, all season long. You know, I didn't usually eat all day just waiting for that because it was just outstanding. So thank you very much. Blue collar bistro for all you did for us up here in the press box. Absolutely. They're the official sponsors of the 92 on the wolf broadcast team. So Van Wert will kick it off. Clyde will get it again. Let's see what they want to do with it. High end over end. There's been a lot of kickoff returns for the Flyers. The Flyers oh, try a reverse good. and they fumble it. And <laughs> I'm sure they don't practice that a whole lot. No, it didn't <laughs> look like they practiced it. Probably <laughs> might be the first time he ever did it right there. The way it looked. Brad Bannister, what do you think about that one? Do you think they repped that one a lot of practice? My guess is that's not repped <laughs> very frequently. No, I, I don't think so. <laughs> Now, Coach Carter, if I'm not mistaken, Coach Carter will get some of his other kids in, won't he, or will let these seniors play it out? They probably let the seniors play it out. They're out here, and they know this is the last time they're going to be on the field in Ball. high school uniform. Ball's at the 24. Cook at quarterback. He's back looking, looking, like to throw a little possession pass out here in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Griffin Knopfson, and you can just kind of tell that the air is out of the balloon, Mike, as – Another drop pass, and we've not seen this many this year. And it's not to complain. I mean, it's just the fact that right. what we're seeing here in the ball game, it's cold out. Okay, first and foremost, it's windy, it's cold. You're down by 34 points. Um, that all comes into play. Yeah. Uh, Jane Cook really has performed well tonight. He's looking again. Now he's going to go up the middle of the field. He's going to slip. And he'll slide down at the, they're going to spot him at the 27, just a pickup of a few. It'll be third down at about seven. So, Brad Bannister, we're going to be moving into basketball season as you and I next Friday will be entertaining a girls' contest as we switch from football to basketball. It'll be a little warmer for you, Brad. I, I was just getting ready to say, <laughs> boy, that inside sport sounds pretty good right uh, right after this game. <laughs> Kirk throws another bolt on the left side in and out of the hands of the receiver. And they'll make it fourth down. So, yeah, Brad Bannister, we'll be switching into our inside gear and our inside voices <laughs> as we go ahead and, and broadcast. But it has been a pleasure to be able to handle the, the Bellevue Redmond this year along with the Clyde Flyers. Definitely been an honor for us to continue to be the voices of those two fine football programs in Northwest Ohio. Cook throws it over here and complete. He just puts his head down and walks to the sideline. As it was a fourth down pass play that went for Knob. 
So they turn it over on downs again. Van Wert will get it. I would think that Van Wert's just going to kind of take a couple knees, Mike, and just let this thing do what it does. Oh, absolutely. So uh, we will see if Brad Bansford can get Coach uh, Carter. If he can't, we'll obviously end our post-game show. We'll maybe get some stats for you. But we do want to thank everybody for making our football broadcast possible this year. Is this moving into year number 37 and doing this? It has always been memorable, to say the least. And we're very thankful for all those part of the BAS Sports Network. And our best wishes to the winner of the Port Clinton Perkins game as they will be facing this very, very good football yeah. team uh, going into um, next week for the regional finals as they take a knee. And, Mike, uh, that 40-second clock will get it down to a minute, so they just have to take three knees and they'll call today. But, uh, Van Wert, best wishes to the Cougars as, boy, they came out here with a fist of fury. Now, Clyde's had a few teams come out here and play hard. Or Tiff Columbian, let's say one of them, they came yeah. out and scored boom, boom, boom. But because of the fact that they could not, uh, Clyde could not crack the end zone in the first half. Mike is why they lost this football game tonight. Right. And there was a few plays that it could have went the, you know, the other way, but this fan work team balanced and, uh, Pratt is everything that, uh, he's been touted to be. Well, I'll look at down here. We got our head coach from Lakota over here, Mike Leno with us. 57 seconds left. And they'll be taking one more knee. And then that will be the end of it. We will pick a Wendy's player of the game for tonight. As they're going to go ahead and take that knee. And then that will pretty much be it. So they were Cougars. They're trying to find their way back into the state finals. They're going to win this one today. Your final here tonight, Van Wert, 48, Clyde, 14. Van Wert will advance to the next round. They'll be in the Division Four Region 14 finals against the winner of Port Clinton and Perkins. And it looked like Port Clinton was winning that game late. So we'll see what happens on that. Either way. Your final here tonight, 48-14. Van Wert on top. We'll be back with the postgame after this. Pick up your 2021-2022 Fremont Ross Athletic Booster Club card for only $10 this year. They have 43 local merchants on the card. Plus, you receive a Little Giant t-shirt at Phase 1. Cards are available at Denny's, Steinle GMC Cadillac, and at Fremont Ross High School. The Booster Club is once again the proud sponsor of tonight's Player of the Game. Find them on Facebook at Fremont Ross Athletic Boosters for monthly meeting updates and events. Go Little Giants! My job is to ask you about life insurance. Please don't make it my job to tell your family you didn't have any. At Wealthy Insurance Group, they're here to put your mind at ease with life insurance that will work with you for a policy that has your family's future covered. Life insurance is because you love them. Our family protecting yours. Welty Insurance Group, representing Erie Insurance. Call today, 419-334-4477. No bones about it, we have the meats. One bite and you're going to love Arby's Boneless Wings. It's six or nine pieces of tender all-white meat chicken in a crispy breading, sauced and tossed in hot honey sauce. Choose your favorite side to round out your meal. Then satisfy your sweet tooth with Arby's Caramel Cinnamon Shake. It's a creamy caramel cinnamon experience topped with whipped cream and a sprinkle of cinnamon. Stop in today. Arby's in Fremont, Port Clinton, Clyde, and Huron. Check out the upcoming auctions and real estate listings at Bonnickson.com. Consign in their upcoming fall consignment auction on November 20th at consign.bonnickson.com. Bonnickson and Associates, where buying and selling has never been this easy. Contact one of their realtors or auctioneers today for more information. Ask them about their new real estate and auction packages. Fremont Federal Credit Union High School Football. 92 on the Wolf. 92 on the Wolf. WOHF. All right, standing in the big end of the Napoleon Wildcats 
emblem in the middle of this field is Brad Bannister as he's sitting there, his last chance to dance here on the broadcast team for at least this. Uh, Brad, solid defeat by the Flyers tonight. Uh, they just ran into a very well-balanced, I mean, most balanced team we've seen all year, Mike Martin. Um, just not much Clyde could do if they didn't work today. No, and the thing about it is, like we said, um, Aiden Pratt, how he goes, the team's going to go. Aiden Pratt went really well tonight. So, you know, that's that's something that, you know, balance. He's able to throw the ball down the field. A number of receivers, when I look at the stats here and go over the stats, they had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different receivers that caught balls tonight. And, you know, he spread it around a lot and was able to get out of a lot of the rushes. And one thing that hasn't happened all year for Clyde, they haven't been able to put – they didn't put a lot of pressure on him because he was able to roll out of the pocket right. and he was able to get rid of that ball real quick. Well, that was the key. The key was the timing yep. of when they would Absolutely. pass because he was such a threat to run that you had to kind of play assignment football. And because of that, he knew when to get rid of it. We'll see if Coach Carter comes over to to uh, Brad Bannister. If not, we'll take a timeout and get back. But again, uh, 48 to 14, here's a, here's a pretty big win. The Port Clinton Redskins find themselves – in the regional finals, and they will take on the Van Wert Cougars next week. Who knows where that game will be played, to be honest. Uh, there's a pretty big spread between those two programs, yes, distance-wise. So who knows where that might be, maybe a Mansfield. Um, I'm not sure where they'll schedule it, but we'll see if Coach Carter has a chance to talk to Brad. And if not, obviously, we're going to let him do his thing. But Port Clinton wins tonight, 19-14. to 14, So it'll be Van Wert against Port Clinton. Uh, taking on for a chance to go to the state final four. Well, well, Coach Carter looked at me. Is he, he commandeered by the team? Yeah, well, he looked at me and he looked at the guy with the camera and he said, I'm going that way. <laughs> well, get to get your phone out, get the camera. And... All right, we'll take a timeout. We'll get back, Brad. If you can get him and you want to record that, that'd be great. Uh, again, the final here, Van Wert wins big, 48-14. to 14. They're going to move to the regional final against Port Clinton next week. Stay tuned for the rest of our postgame here tonight. Again, you're listening to Fremont Federal Credit Union Regional Championship Action here tonight on 92.1 The Wolf, part of the BAS Sports Network. Tonight's postgame show is brought to you by Frozone Frozen Yogurt, Tiffin's spot for premium frozen yogurt. We'll head back to the stadium after this on the BAS Sports Radio Network.